All right, let's see. We are ready here to hopefully finish off this scene today. <laughs> I was getting my supplies ready. Then I thought, oh, I need to check my camera with that focusing issue. I hope this is back on track. Oh, maybe, golly. I cannot do this scene with this thing hunting around like that. I thought I just figured this out right here. My camera was having a hard time focusing in here, and it's doing it again. I thought I just got that resolved here. Hello, PJB, Don, Teresa, and Kay. Let me see if I can get this focused in here. Uh, kind of, not exactly. I might, if, if this thing finds focus, I'm just going to stay on it and not move it for the rest of the, uh, the video. Okay, let me see if I can get these in here. And let's see if what we can do here on this camera. I think somewhere along the line, I think I readjusted something and it kind of messed things up. Hello, Beatrice. Hello, CM. And... Uh... Oh my goodness. This is going crazy here. All right, I'm turning off my camera and turning it back on right here, my desk camera. And let's see what this does here. All right, I guess that's the trick. I might have to turn off and turn back on. All right, let me see here. All right, I'm not moving that. When I do detailed work, uh, break out the mic, you know, the magnifying glasses or something. Hello in Ontario, Canada, Sheila. How are you today? Hello, Froggy Fresh. Oh, that's interesting, Teresa. You got got on on the big screen. Well, I hope this is in focus on the big screen. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think I have it focused over here, but I mean, this is all like in the same, you know, distance here. I, I don't know. Hopefully that stays in focus. All right, so here's one of the things that I was noticing here. Hello, Don. Um, this is, um, as my colors of my dye-based inks dried, look how much, I want to zoom in here, but I, I, I don't dare do that, I don't think, but my island right in the background here really shows through. But like I said, um, when doing this piece yesterday, oh yeah, let me, eh, I was going to readjust, um, exposure here, but I think that looks pretty good in terms of, uh, the actual piece. Okay, but... A lot of the things that we do here are, we don't, um, I don't make a, I don't concern myself with things like this, that things showing through, if I'm going to be using these pens anyways, okay? Or even when I'm not using these types of pens, if I'm doing other types of imagery, it often gets covered up with those kind of, um, I don't know, I, I call it kind of accessory types of um, detailing that we do with um, other types of inks outside of um, dye-based inks. I, I didn't used to always use these things and it was just dye-based inks and, you know, the dye-based inks were the, um, were, were the destination medium, okay? And I would be a lot more careful back then about certain things, but I just happen to think that these other types of textures look really good and enhance a scene anyway. So it really takes out a lot of the, um, oh, I don't know, some of the, some of the, finishing types of um, considerations that you might kind of think about if you were to not utilize those things, but they just really open the door up for um, other types of um, looks in certain areas and objects where it just doesn't really matter what you do in a lot of the preliminaries. So anyways, um, let's see. Okay, so 
glad it's looking okay there for you guys in terms of the detailing. Like I said, I think I better not touch anything. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. I, I forgot to take a look at that with my camera um, yesterday, but I think I might have found the problem, but I was trying to get that resolved. Okay, so anyways, um, one of the things about the die based inks here, the Marvy inks I find tend to stay fairly um, vivid in terms of um, when they're applied and when they dry, it's a little bit different on kind of your matte and semi um, glossy card stocks um, in terms of the finish. They can look, you know, uh, certain types of things just dull out, okay, because they're absorbed into the paper and they, um, you know, there's not, there's less surface um, retention of that media Okay, so they can kind of dry in a softer look. Yeah, how's the daughter there with that burn? I hope uh, doing better each day. Uh, glad to hear it. Glad to hear they're doing better. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going in here. And um, I don't know, one of the good things, you know, sometimes with uh, kind of taking a break from a piece, which I don't always like to do. I really felt like finishing this piece last night. After I ate, I was like really itching to get back into it. But sometimes you can see, you can use a little bit more contrast in certain areas. Now, remember when you spray seal this though, um, these pieces, especially if you used a lot of uh, layered dye based inks, they're gonna get more vivid and darker anyway, okay? So, um, uh, you know, you need to, you know, uh, worry about that really too much, but just from a visibility standpoint, I think I can get a little bit darker in some of these areas to enhance my shadows. Yeah, I saw that cookie uh, comment there. Yeah, we're all going, uh, we're all going to Maine. <laughs> Let's see, it's July, it's almost August. Um, when is that full color in Maine? Is that, was that in mid-August or something like that? Some amazing sights. I got to make it out there one of these days, even if I don't go to Acadia. Although, I don't know, maybe on the weekends it's not too bad. I was ta chatting with someone that went there, um, I think it was a year ago, and they were telling me, yeah, if you don't get in some of those parking lots at uh, by 10 a.m., you're pretty, it's probably earlier than that, you know, you're out of luck. You're not going to be able to park in those uh, trailhead parking lots, um, you know, for the rest of the day. Okay, so, yeah, it's just getting a little bit darker in some of these areas. I'm, I'm darkening some areas because, I, I you know, the, um, the, the pens here are going to be fairly vibrant, okay? So I want my shading to be able to somewhat match. It's not going to be the intensity, but maybe the value, you know, in terms of uh, brightness, darkness, that type of thing, from a visual sense, okay? Pit pens, how do they work on glossy? You'd never used pit pens uh, before. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna meet in the middle of uh, where you are in, uh, in Maine, in Cincinnati, huh? <laughs> Oh, New Hampshire, New Hampshire, yeah. Any of that area up there. I, I love those colors up there. We don't get a lot of color in California, that's for sure, but you get them in some areas, mostly Aspens up in the Sierras. But in terms of full colors, you know, like the reds and oranges and stuff like that, you don't really see that around. Of course, we have the high deserts though, and uh, checking out the, uh, the, uh, the annuals, um, and some of those desert blooms like that, really amazing out there. And the intensity of uh, cacti blooms are really something. Everyone th always thinks about the wildflowers, but it, to me, it's the cacti that are the, really the most spectacular. But everyone always wants to see those annuals like in Anza Borrego and Death Valley and stuff like that. But I think later on in the year, like around Maine, uh, I mean, not <laughs> Maine, May. <laughs> um, that's when I, I really like going out to the deserts and watching those cacti and yucca blooms. 
All right, so just going in here, I think that looks pretty good in terms of uh, the intensity here and values, I would say. All right, no more beating around the bush. Let's just get right into it. I haven't used these in a while, so um, let's see how these go. Okay, I almost kind of forgot how, the way I used to use these. Okay, I think I went with the, okay, just in general, when I'm using opaque um, types of media, such as these pens here, these are acrylic paint pens. They're a lot more translucent than they are opaque, but they're reasonably opaque. Um, but um, when I apply these, I tend to go dark to light, okay? When I'm using um, transparent colors, I tend to go from light to dark, okay? So um, things like, I don't know, you can say that colored pencils are somewhat opaque, but you can't really apply... Um, I don't know, they're really trans more transparent. If I put like a yellow pencil over a black colored pencil, you know, it's not going to look real yellow. Okay, that black is going to be showing through, so. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was subconscious, Don. Okay, let's see. Um, the bouncy cluck we keep... You're probably hearing this right here. There's a ball inside these pens right here that, um, the agitators inside these right here. If you hear, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I forgot I have my um, volume all the way up on my um, computer here. Sorry about that. You're hearing um, the little um, posts. Every time someone posts, you know, on the computer here, you're getting that. So I just turned my volume down. Okay, so, um, yeah, I turned down my volume there. Um, okay, so let's get right into this. Okay, so like I said, um, there's going to be uh, um, a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, um, I don't know, kind of a... a it's like almost like culture shock, but it's visual shock here, <laughs> okay? When I start laying down these pens, because it's going to look totally out of place in terms of a texture. Well, maybe not too out of place, but because this one's kind of has that orangey tinge here. Okay. All right. Now, folks, I would normally start zooming in here, but I was having trouble with the focusing part of my camera here. So I'm just going to do it like that. All right. I don't know. Let's see if I can hold this up and you can see some of it. Let's see if it focuses in a little bit. Nah, it's not. Okay, but anyways, imagine that is a clear picture. <laughs> okay, but anyways, see, I'm laying down some of this. Now, I don't want these aspen trees to be orange, okay? But again, it's kind of a base layer color for um, those more, you know, translucent, opaque types of applications here. Okay, sorry about this. In terms of the visuals of this. But, um, I don't know, I'm almost done here with this whole tree here. This is going on a lot faster than I thought. Um, these pens right here, I wish they were a little bit more opaque, but in some ways having them a little bit more translucent, it merges and harmonizes with, um the the background a little bit better so maybe it's good for that i don't know um because it can be rather i don't know kind of shocking of a visual again i, I mentioned this to people anytime you add in it could be a new temperature a new texture something that's out of the ordinary from what you've already applied it can look strange, especially if applied in one area, but the thing is about all this, all these different types of applications right here, um, we're going for kind of universal colors and harmonies, or even if it's not universal, there's a repetition of it. So from a textural standpoint, you know, you have to kind of add it in other areas, especially, it, this one's kind of extreme because we're adding in all these um, pen dots around in here and it's you know it's a fairly bold type of mark okay but this is especially true let's say if we're only using a white paint pen which i do on a lot of different um um pieces you know i don't use all kinds of colors i wanted to on this one though for these um fall tones autumn tones 
Um, but the white paint pen, I mean, if you just, if you haven't used them before, you're going to put down like three dots or something like that in some area and say, oh my god, that looks kind of weird and out of place. But you bring it into the scene as a universal kind of reflective type of quality, if it's highlights or something like that, or textures. And then that makes it, from a visual point of view, it makes sense that, you know, at that point in time, okay. I'm saying this to the people that haven't done this before. You know, when we use um, the white pigment ink, same way, you know. It looks strange just added in one area, you know, but it'll be a universal tone. Okay, but anyways, this is the type of thing that I always envisioned for my um, trees like that. The shag bark hickory, the quaking aspens, um, but you know, I don't know when these acrylic paint pens came around in those nice, you know, relatively inexpensive sets, but it was like, oh, okay, finally, I have what I need to um, really kind of showcase these trees in a way that, you know, I envisioned for them. I don't know when I drew these things, 15, 20 years ago. I mean, I was using them like that, but it would be like, you know, the white gel pen or something like that on there. But these um, paint pens really do the trick, okay? For what I'm, you know, kind of my concept. Okay, now these paint pens also dry a lot darker than what they look like when they're freshly applied, okay? So just keep that in mind too. And it could be a good thing um, because they just really harmonize with the, um, with the foundation. And if you wanna get it a little bit more opaque, then you just apply um, more coats of it in there, okay? Froggy Fresh has a black blob on your pants from the uh, the stays on, right? You're going to have to incorporate that into the pants then. Take that black blob and make it into something. You know, Froggy, you know, Froggy Fresh, you're, you know, you're super creative, you know? Make it make it into something or add a patch on on your uh, on your uh, your pants, you know? Like something like that. Remember how everyone, like in the 70s, everyone was, it was all about patches on your jeans. Everyone's jeans were like covered in patches. <laughs> and on their jean jackets and stuff like that. Okay, so adding in, now this one really stands out right in the background, right? Let me see if I can get this little zoomed in here and stay in focus. It's wavering right there. Okay, I'm going to stake right there. What I like to do with some of these um, leaves after I get everything kind of established here is to um, add some of these leaves like on these rocks down here and whatnot, you know, fallen leaves down here if it's fall, right? But yeah, how do you get, uh, how do you get um, stays on out of clothes? You get, uh, not the stays on, um, cleaner you might be able to use some kind of um uh i don't know dawn <laughs> it's like dawn's always you know one of those types of like dishwashing detergent uh, types of things probably that and uh and a, a toothbrush or something like that provided you haven't already washed that and sent it through the dryer or something like that but i i, I i'm i'm for the incorporation of it you know Make make uh, some artwork from your uh, from that um, you know kind of uh, undesirable application of media. You know, it's not I always say that undesirable kind of um, application of media, as opposed to saying mistake. You know what I mean? Because I always tend to think that we can do a lot of things with things, and that's where some of the best ideas come about, really, from those kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of unintentional types of marks that happen, you know, during the, uh, the process. So I'm always emphasizing, like, things like process over destination. It's when people are too kind of destination-oriented, you know, they'll get into, you know, like the compositional stage or something like that and it's like oh my god i messed up or something like that but it's not you know that's when we're kind of you've got like one eye on you know 
kind of the destination, you know, and I don't know, what do you say? You know, when you have one eye in the destination, you only have one eye with which to work. And I, I tend to believe that, you know. It, I didn't always think that either, okay? But it's like over time, you know, you kind of, certain types of things come about and it's like, oh, you got, you know, a really good idea from that. And then another time you get a good idea from that thing happening. And oh, this one, you know, I had to do some problem solving through it. And it's like, oh, okay, that came out even better than I thought. And after that happens so many times, it's like, you kind of, I'm not going to do something on purpose, you know, to purposely kind of throw myself, you know, off track or something like that. But I don't kind of, um, I don't know. I see the value of it um, when that those types of things happen. Okay, so there's the oranges applied in there, all right? It's getting a little bit more shimmery, those those trees. Now, if I wasn't going to use all these, these paint pens on these trees, I would have colored them different. They would have been like yellows and things like that. I would have spent much more time with that, okay? And one of the things that you can do too is what's kind of nice, and I was thinking about it, was um, in the description section of the video that I posted last night, I was thinking maybe what I'll do is I'll use some of these paint pens on here and then I'll apply some um, clear embossing powder to it because you can do that. You can emboss these um, paint applications, which I've tried on uh, one or two videos so far, and I thought it looked really good. It came out even more dimensional like that, so yeah. Um, PJ, you landed on a block of cement. Oh my gosh. So decades ago, you could have said, um, if it showed through your white jeans, um, you could have said that you have a tattoo there. <laughs> Decades ago, it wouldn't have been in fashion, though, maybe. Not as much as it would be, uh, to say, today, you know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I fell on my tailbone one time when I was in college, and that completely threw everything out of whack for a long time, so I know how that really felt. Nail polish on your khakis. On uh, my pants. The saying came out, wash my pants immediately. Eh, great tip there. Yeah. You know, when I read that there, wasn't wasn't nail polish remover used for some kind of um stamping kind of I don't know, was it a technique or something? Or did they, what, someone use nail polish remover for something in stamping? Does anyone, does that sound familiar with, to anyone? Or, yeah. Because I remember, I remember thinking something about that, thinking, well, um, I, I don't know if I was in some workshop and people were talking about it. And, and then I was thinking, well, you know, I'm like the one person here in the room that just wouldn't have, you know, nail polish remover. But I seem to recall thinking that. But I, th I don't know if it was for some kind of technique or something. Okay, so this is green here. Okay, so I'm building up. So I'm going with oranges and greens. But I did color my trees using you know, a similar palette. It was kind of like these colors right here. So you see what I mean? I'm just kind of going through and reiterating those type of, you know, that type of color scheme. Again, with the pens here, okay? So, I mean, I didn't go into this with alcohol pens because they just, you know, they wouldn't show up at all. So there'd be no reason for that. But, you know, I did use like some of that green from uh, the, al it, it was either an alcohol pen or the colored pencil within this area right here. So it just gives a little bit of a, kind of a color harmony to it. Not that you have to do that. I tend to think that, but then I start seeing some people that, you know, have really distinctive types of um, color schemes going on, on their pieces. And it just looks so clean and airy, you know, as a different look. And it occurs to me that, uh, or it has occurred to me that, oh, I should try that sometime, but I don't know. I'm t I tend to be going with the, 
kind of like a painting type of, um, you know, approach to it, like oil painting. Where you really use a lot of universal tones um, throughout the piece. Um, just for like color continuity and whatnot. All right, so adding this down, you can see I'm not being, you know, terribly careful about this. Again, you don't have to be. I'm not even like looking at this sometimes. Aquanet hairspray. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Um, it's the it's probably the solvent in those sprays like that. Well, what color were your pants, Froggy Fresh? Is that what it was for, Donna? The um, the nail polish remover? Huh. If you're referring to that. I'm trying to remember if people were using oil pastels, though, back when in regards to that. Hmm. Maybe. All right, getting a little bit more of that shimmer on there, but this, see this green right here? I mean, this is the way this green looks on that piece of paper, but right here, because those colors are showing through, it looks more olive. Okay, so again, I'm just kind of building up through that. Um, like I said, th this pen right here, this brand, I guess, it doesn't have the, the pigment ratio isn't as, um, kind of high as maybe this other one. So when I get to my yellow, I'm going to break out this other one and just see if it's indeed more opaque when applied, but I want to get this kind of texturing laid down. So again, kind of going for a little bit of this. I don't know, if you look at this real close up, it would look kind of more, a little bit more of like a, like an impressionistic type of piece or pointillism, you know, type of thing. There weren't too many painters that used kind of pointillism as a technique, but um, it was, pr I'm guessing, I don't know what, uh, I don't remember my art history, but it was probably around that Impressionism time or post-Impressionism or something like that. Um, shorts were red. I threw this out. I'm more concerned with the big black stain. <laughs> I would suggest the, uh, the pumice stone, but I don't think, uh, that would be, um, that might not be the uh, the place to use the pumice stone on my hands and stuff like that, but um, yeah, well, you know, if it's in that location, just you know, it should be fine. Just don't, uh, you know, I mean, if you're going like, uh, you know, the beach or something like that, you know, it might be. Uh, noticed uh, by the public. All right. Hand sanitizer. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work. Maybe. I don't know. You, uh, people, no one's mentioned, I don't see up here in the chat thing, the stays on ink, uh, the stays on cleaner. <laughs> I say just wear it with pride, you know what I mean? Don't, you know, we're, we're stampers here. We get pride with inky fingers, you know. So if you, like, get, like, other inky, you know, bodily parts, then that should be, like, extra pride, right? All right, so here comes the yellow. Do you see that kind of shimmer in there? I No, this is not going to be that light and bright like that, okay? So I'm going, to, like I said, I'm gonna go for my other brand here and see if that does the trick. But that other brand did come with a, uh, a yellow in there, okay? Now what I start doing right here too, um, when I get into these lighter colors like this, I tend to cluster it a little bit more like this, okay? So you don't, ha you don't have to go for a real smooth kind of uniform application, you just kind of cluster it in an area like that. And that represents where the kind of the lighting is hitting in that area. Let me shake this up again too.
Maybe that stays on as like the, uh, it'll work like henna or something like that. It'll be, it'll kind of, it'll, um, you know, kind of come out over time. I don't think I've ever, I, I've used the stays on, but I'm trying to think if I have, um, I've just been using it like for a couple weeks now, but I'm trying to think if I had it all over my fingers. But the pumice, you know, the pumice sponge took it, you know, takes everything out, like instantly, on my fingers at least. All right, so, like so. By the way, I mean, all these trees around in here, they probably, they, in this kind of beaver type of environment, they probably wouldn't be, there wouldn't be so many trees, but what I always say is, you know, we're not necessarily going for so-called realism in our scenes. Maybe, you know, you're referencing and you want it to look as real as possible. Yeah, I mean, you could do something like that, but I just think that, you know, this kind of beaver environment like this, full of, you know, trees in full color or something like that would be much more kind of, I don't know, scenic and inviting an area where in reality, all these areas around here that are even close to this area would have been, you know, they would have been chopped down by the beaver. Or maybe it's one of those things you can just say, um, it was, a, you know, this beaver, law, you know, dam and lodge, you know, it was kind of abandoned for, you know, a number of years, and uh, here, you know, some beaver has come along, and he's... They have a family of beaver has, you know, kind of, you know, moved into the area again after all this, you know, all this growth has uh, come back in the area. <laughs> Starting to come to life though, right? With those, um, with this yellow here. And, you know, it's too bad that it's gonna kind of fade out though, you know, or dull out and get more translucent. But, like I said, maybe, you know, going in with that other one, maybe you have a more translucent one that blends in for kind of a base layer texture, and then you have a brighter one, you know, to come in after that for your dimension and opacity or something like that. Boy, look how, look how bright that is over there. And look at this, just from here to here, in the time that took me to get from there to there, those little yellow dots turn to that color over there. This is what I always wanted to do, though. I, you know, this is what I always envisioned for my trees, something like this. I always wanted it to look like, um, kind of like nature's stained glass, you know, where, you know, when you're looking at it from um, where it's being backlit. I always found that to be really spectacular looking. Unfortunately, I don't see that too often in real life, because like I said, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, deciduous trees, you know what I mean, in, uh, you know, Southern California. You know, unless someone plants like a aspen or, you know, maple out in their yard, then yeah, but um, naturally, you know, not too much. I went hiking one time. There was this one area called um, Aspen, ah, I forget what it was, Aspen Grove or something like that. It's over by Big Bear. And it's one of the few Aspen groves, natural Aspen groves, kind of in the Southern California area. And it's because they planted beaver at one time. There was this beaver planting program. Um, I don't know, probably in the 40s or 50s or something like that, just to kind of enhance the kind of natural ecosystem of these certain areas. But the problem is, is that um, the beaver, you know, did what beavers do. You know, they they chopped down all the, uh, the aspen groves everywhere. And then when they kind of realized that was all happening, they wanted to get the beaver out of there, but it was a lot harder getting them out of there than it was, you know, kind of, you know, kind of planting them is what I, what was in the, you know, the, the trail description there. All right, so kind of coming to life a little bit more. All right. And let's see. 
let's start hitting some of these other areas in here. There's the textures are all running through um, the uh, trees, so we need to bring in some universal textures down into the water and such like that. What was that there about those coffins? <laughs> Let me see here. Could you see a scene, Kevin doing a scene on somebody's body? <laughs> we'll get some, um, we'll get some, uh, what would we do that? And would we do it and um, just use um, like a stays on then? Or would we do it in like henna or something like that? You know? We'll go for a full body tattoo, too, you know what I mean? Huh. Or like a full black or full sleeves, as they call it. Can you imagine, you know? We'll do a, we'll do a whole scenario here. We'll start on... The left hand's going to be... The left and an arm kind of going around in the back of the back will be... Um, that'll be like winter or something like that, then we'll transition into the spring around the shoulder blade, second shoulder blade will be um, summer, I mean, uh, let me see, winter, spring, summer, oh yeah, and then fall, so the fall will be the right hand, so something like that, go, you know. Hello, uh, Diana. You don't have to have dark skies for a rainbow. You have to have a bright sky. There's never a rainbow near waterfalls. There's always a rainbow near waterfalls. Yeah, but that's colored light, though, Froggy Fresh. That's not reflective light. So if you want to have something look, you know, you wouldn't want to put, like, a rainbow into a, a light area, unless you can make it look really light and airy. But that rainbow is going to be darker, you know, in a white area and it wouldn't be representative of light then. So, you know, in two-dimensional media, we're always working with contrast, right? So that was always my thing, you know. I, I've always liked the look of um, rainbows in people's scenes, though, but it always occurs to me that it's often kind of in a darker area, in, unless, you, unless you're going with a blue or something like that up next to it or some kind of color. But I don't know. Uh, do that, you know. I want to see, I, you know, it'd be awesome to see some kind of interpretations of that. I'd love for that to be able to, you know, to be done. And then I've always kind of wondered how, how do you, you know, with a rainbow, how to get those really nice blends into that arcing area. I've done like what I've, you know, my solution for a rainbow, which is like, it represented something like, you know, as if you were 20 feet away from a rainbow and you were still able to see it. I've done something like that within clouds. Um, like you're within the clouds seeing that. But um, I haven't done it kind of like in a distance, but wouldn't it be awesome to do like rainbows where there's like even like that, you know, like a double rainbow where like there's a portion of one of them. Wouldn't that be awesome? But I'd love uh, that type of uh, thing, element, within scenes. Any type of um, reflective and refracting light, I always love. I always say that a lot of times, um, you know, my scenes... I mean, there's a lot of imagery in this scene right here, but um, it's, to me, the thing that it's more about than the imagery or something like that or, or this beaver dam or something like that from an emotional standpoint it's about lighting in here so it's often about you know some sort of light source or area that's um, casting the light and then it's the reflected light in certain areas or on certain objects like that okay and that's where this um these paint pens are really fun to use because they kind of represent colored light so again, that kind of plays into the aspect of, um, you know, um, rainbows or whatnot. Um, you get, you often get the emotion. Um, you can do it. Emotions can come about from imagery too, for you know, for sure. But oftentimes, for me, um, the easiest way to achieve kind of an emotional quality in your pieces is through your use of 
you know, oftentimes it's skies because that's often where the lighting is coming from. Um, but yeah, color and lighting, you know, so in areas like this, what I always mention to people is the only difference between coloring and lighting, you know, in an area such as this is it's the retention of certain areas. So it's just doing, it's actually doing less coloring over certain things instead of just doing this all in a universal application of a certain value of brown you use different values of it or different colors and then you leave some things just as is so it's the retention of it doesn't have to be the white of the page but lighter areas like that okay so hopefully okay like i said if you just joined in or you weren't with us yesterday i'm kind of having a little bit of problems with my uh camera focusing on here i think i i don't know i was i'm trying to remember if i've played around with it recently trying to get things set or something like that and I've reset the uh, or changed my um, focus settings or something like that but what I'm doing with this pen here is I'm bringing on a lot more or a little bit more um, contrast in that area and again it's there here we are about the lighting right so this is the maple trees down here but I just stamped the top portions of them as bushes so what I'm doing is I colored them in with like a, you know, medium tone green in there. There are certain areas of the uh, maple trees that are darker. So what I'm doing with this pen is I'm going back and I'm reiterating the lighter areas in here that are within the design like that, okay? So I darken shadows, you know, with darker inks, and then I go back in with these types of pens and I bring out the lighting again with these of these pens right there. So. Highlight the light areas and darken the shadow areas of the design. So, you know, if you're ever kind of wondering where do you put highlights or something like that, just my suggestion is always just look at the design. Or sometimes what you've done, like in this water area right here, just where whatever areas are lighter than others, okay, and I didn't plan all this out. I didn't know, oh, there's going to be a streak here or something like that. But just whatever you've created through use of um, the application of tone, just do the same thing. So when I go in here with white, I'm just going to be hitting that white areas in here and these areas in here with a little bit of a lighter blue. Okay. All right. Now, this, is, this isn't so extreme right here because I'm going with green over green. Okay. So I'm just kind of building up that contrast slowly here. Is this? Oh my God, I think I finally, I might have ran, I might have gone through this color already. Yeah, there's a little bit left. I'm looking through here and I can see right through here, there's, I must like green or something like that. <laughs> I'm surprised that I, yeah, they're, okay, there's some in there still. Okay, here we go. But I've used a lot of it so far. This pen, I didn't realize I used this pen so much. Or any of these co colors so far. All right. See that? It's looking a little bit more shimmery down. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer with this. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, the cookies are done. What kind of cookies did you make? And what, here's a survey, what's everyone's favorite cookie or do you have a favorite cookie? I think chocolate chip comes to mind for me.
All right, so adding that in like so, all right, this area will become much more visible when I hit that with white, okay? All right, let's go in with our three millimeter light blue paint pen. It's going to be pretty bold, but I'm going to try to keep that in the areas that are roughly the same value of blue, okay? Okay, so, um, it's actually like invisible in there. Okay, I'll go in a little bit into the darker areas right there where you can kind of see that right in there. But see, I'm just going for a textural um, uh, addition. It's not really a textural contrast, but it's just adding that, what they call um, specular light into a scene. And just from a textural standpoint, it, it's a little bit more kind of impressionistic. It's, you know, it's, you know, the impressionists were, you know, their thing was um, kind of painting light, right? Or their kind of representation of it. So everything kind of shimmers and whatnot. This is not like an impressionistic painting because there's, you know, tight, detailed work in there, but we can have those kind of elements in there like that. If you ever go to a museum or something like that, art museums, I always found that the Impressionism rooms um, were always the most popular, the Monets and stuff like that. Um, that was never my favorite period of art. Um, I was always more into kind of tighter details and stuff like that, prints and drawing, black and white stuff. Um, but everyone loves color like that. So Getty Museum and all that, everyone is always kind of um, all in that uh, impressionism room. I like um, things like, I really loved um, illuminated manuscripts especially. All right, let's see. Oops, my screen wasn't rolling. I was gonna say everyone got pretty quiet here. Let me see. Lots of moorland and heather. Ah, scratch and sniff. I want cookies. <laughs> Where did I get the damn stamp? I wasn't here yesterday. Where did I get, uh, are you saying where, oh, uh, well that's, it's Stampscapes, Beatrice. You didn't get that, uh, I don't know, you have everything else. Well, you got a lot of the sets that's not on the set. Hello, Jeannie. I love the paint pens too, uh, Joy. They add a lot of texture, you know, but the thing about it is it's like colored texture too. So it's really fun because you can really incorporate that in there. Post a picture in Facebook. I'll do that. Uh, yeah, the beaver is going to be colored and everything will be rendered in. Chocolate chip. Yeah, Don's uh, chocolate chip or butterscotch, then peanut butter. Peanut butter chocolate chip mix for Jeannie. Okay. Donna doesn't like cookies, ginger nuts, or shortbread. Ah, got it. Um, what type of pen? Sue, I'm using um, both the... They call these three millimeter pens I'm finding mostly online. They call them fine points, but to me, they're not fine at all. But then they call the 0.7 millimeters the extra fine points. So this is a three millimeter acrylic paint pen, and this one's the 0.7 millimeter acrylic paint. Those are the two sizes that I find that um, they sell, you know, most often. I don't, I don't really see this set here says two to three millimeter, but I, every pen in this kind of format right here is all th they're all three millimeters from what I've seen, okay, or 
they're the 0.7 millimeter. So I, you know, something like this, this takes care of kind of bolder applications, stuff that I never would have used until I was using it about a year ago when I got a set of these. But then I was like, oh, these were perfect for these um, trees in here, okay? For that real textural um, look. Um, and like I said, it's, it, I don't know, it reminds, it reminds me of a little bit of, I don't know if it reminds me of, but the technique reminds me of kind of impressionism of, and then we're actually working with paint here, so it's acrylic paint, you know, um, which is kind of interesting as opposed to, you know, we're usually working in um, inks, right, in stamping, um, although a lot of pigment inks really remind me of um, paint. A lot, I oftentimes, when I'm talking about um, using uh, pigment ink, I often make the mistake and uh, refer to it as paint. Yeah, just because it reminds me of paint so much. But anyway, adding this down kind of, it gives, it gives a lot more shimmer to it. Now, a lot of times I use um, paint pens in a very minimal way. Like if I'm doing just some greens up there or something like that, to me, um, it looks good or okay or whatever, but I find that if I lay in a couple little like wildflowers or something like that, um, it really kind of, I don't know, it enhances the thing. Uh, it, you can create a, a color range difference, contrast. You can have orange poppies in a green field or something like that. Um, yeah. It sounds like he like, it sounds like he liked the beaver dam, uh, Beatrice. Look at that, you can get the beard, you can do the beaver dam like that, and your son, I don't know if he's ever gotten around to it, he was talking about doing some sky imagery, you can do the beaver dam at night. <laughs> Linda, you are so prolific. I'm always shocked, I'll do some scene and then Linda will have, I won't be on Facebook for a couple days and when I log on again, Linda's done like five versions of it. Even if it's like 11 by 17. <laughs> uh, you've always stamped a lot, but I don't know. There's something that kicked into, I don't know. It's like access to different part of your, uh, I don't know, brain or potential that one as demonstrated by that whole sequential piece of yours, you know. I did that one scene of it, and then you came up with that, I don't know, what was that, that five, six panel piece, you know. And then that 11 by 17 one, too. <laughs> it kind of cracks me up. Um, it's like, whoa! You know, every time I see that type of thing. All those versions of it. It's good stuff, though. Pretty awesome. Okay, so okay, so I'm not zooming in here, cause folks, cause I don't want to lose my um, my camera fo focusing ability like that. When it went out of whack yesterday, if I kind of fiddled around with it too much, it was like everything was out of focus and I couldn't get it back. So I'm not going to zoom in too cl close here. But oh, let's see, I don't know if you can see that. But here's that textural range down here. And like I said, um, one of the things that I was telling people early on is. You know, when you start doing these types of things like this, it can look really kind of weird or even out of place or something like that from a textural standpoint, contrast standpoint. But what I'm going to do is, on all this, what I've found is that um, the uh, white pigment ink applications in the form of mist or whatever it represents later on, it tends to mellow all this out and it, it makes it so it's not so busy, okay? But you get the benefit of the contrast and texture, but you don't get the kind of the weaker points of it where it might be too extreme, you know, in terms of, I don't know, the visual, I don't know, whatever, um, uh, it's almost like, visual um 
<laughs> loudness. I, I don't know. You know, it's something like that. It's just too busy. Okay, with all this in here. But again, when I add that in that pigment ink, it takes care of all that. Okay. Which, which, okay. So if I wasn't going to add in that pigment ink in here, I would just be a lot more delicate with this application. But I don't have to be. Is what I'm saying. Okay. So let's say I'm not going to add in all that. So then I would just be a little bit more you know, judicious in terms of my, I don't know, choices um, with this type of thing. But I don't have to be here, which is kind of fun and liberating because you can kind of go nuts. And you don't have to worry about kind of like permanent, you know, damaging repercussions if there is such a thing. And, you know, when it comes to stamping. <laughs> When people used to be kind of, you know, hesitant about kind of trying something out in my workshops, I would, sometimes I would joke around and I'd say, well, you know, I mean, the worst that can happen is utter, you know, is utter devastation. And then they would laugh and they would try it, you know, they would add in that one extra color or whatever they were doing. All right, so let's see. Adding some white into here. And again, I'm going to try in, uh, some of those other pens in here, but I'm adding in this little white kind of reflective shimmer like that. And again, this white will kind of mellow out, you know, a little bit and blend in with the background when it dries. All right. Down here, it's a little bit too light. I don't want to put this, you know, three millimeter dot like down in here. It'd be a little bit too extreme because this area got darker, okay? that so all right let's see oh but going back to linda's statement up there she says she stamped three different three scenes today and none of them look like my if i was to stamp this scene again mine one you know my second one went like like this one either so I, you know, unless I'm doing something in a, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, can, you know, um, mass production type of, um, format, you know, where I'm doing one stamp here and another stamp here. And then I do that again on the next one, you know, like if I was making Christmas cards or something like that, it, they're not, it, I never get the same thing twice. First of all, I'm going to color something very differently. And uh, I don't know. I might decide to, you know, going from piece to piece. Oh, I should have moved this one over. I should have, you know, maybe I do that tree a little bit, you know, in replication or something. You know what I mean? I'll tweak the scene, you know, from piece to piece. Um, just kind of refining it so that it's always looking different. And then... That's not, you know, to mention, not, you know, the colors itself. The colors will really be, you know, a lot different. I, I probably don't need to use this one right here. This is a little bit of a tan right here. So remember, I used the white in there. You can't even see the white anymore, can you? But that just comes to show you kind of the pigment, um, I guess, ratio inside these pens right here. So like I said, they're good for harmonizing in many ways because you know, it dries darker than what it looks, so it kind of just blends into that whole background, but sometimes you do want to get things like a lot um, lighter. Okay, so that being said, let me try this other pen. Here, let's go with, uh, let's go with this one right here. I did notice, I think, you know, I haven't used these too much here, but... I'm pretty sure that they were more opaque. And then when I read the description of them, they did specify that, you know, I don't know, whatever it was said. It's like 50% more pigment or something like that. Froggy Fresh found their 11 by 17. Now, what did you have there, Froggy Fresh? Was it a ream of 11 by 17? Candy lives on Beaver Lake, and we camp on the river at a beaver dam. Oh, wow. 
Now, have you seen the beavers before? I used to go hiking down at this beaver um, area all the time, and I never saw a beaver before um, there, but um, the lodge wasn't kind of isolated. It was like next to shore, and um, I remember hearing the beaver through that um, dam, and it was such a cool experience seeing that like that. Again, I mentioned uh, in the previous video that um, it was out on this um, federal land, they call it the FCI, um, and Federal Correctional <laughs> Institute, right? But this is this is federal land. It wasn't in near um, the prison or anything like that. But um, no one ever was no one was ever out there. So it was almost like we had this whole area kind of to ourselves, and it was I, a couple of other uh, guys from high school. I you know I heard them talking about it one time. It's like oh they know where it is, but. Um, most people just did not know. Okay, so anyways, let's see if we can get a little bit more of a opaque kind of application of this. And it's also brighter, okay? I don't know if you can see like that right there. But I think I've done this before where I've layered this brand over the other one. This one is, and I hate pronouncing this one, Lan Ren Wang. They didn't make it easy to pronounce. I was thinking these pens should have been called something like, I don't know. The brand should be like Color Fun or something like that. All right. So if, I don't know if you can see a difference between that and that. Now I might start doing it over here and it's like by the time I go over here and this you know, I'm done over here. That might look no different at all. I don't know. Let's see if I can cluster it a little bit more like this. I might need to shake this up more too. I didn't shake this up too much or at all before. I shook up all my other pens before I started this video um, today. So while we have these pens out, you know, I was mentioning it's giving me more of the type of look that I kind of envisioned with these um, tree stamps like this, the deciduous, uh, deci <laughs> the deciduous trees. But, you know, they're not quite the, I don't know, does anyone have Posca? How, how, uh, how opaque are um, the pens out there? I don't know if you've layered them over other colors. If you, you know, if I just do this on white, it looks like, Oh, that is super bright and super opaque, but if you've layered it over, I'm just curious to know if anyone's layered um, like color over color, you know, because that would be the thing that really reveals how um, opaque and rich the paints are within those pens. So you know, these companies, they don't, they, they just, they're just basing their um, quality based on the application of that paint on a white piece of paper. They're not putting color over color of color, okay? And if you notice on like any of their, um, the website, you kind of the examples that they have, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not layered stuff, you know, because that's not what, I don't know, that's not like the main purpose of those pens, I guess, or the, you know, the application of them that they were thinking about. Okay, uh, let me see here. Um, uh, what colors did you stamp the trees in? Okay, so Linda, um, it was roughly these colors right here, okay? So fall tones like that, okay? And some of them had more yellow than others because I just kind of colored it right onto the... Uh, stamp like that and then I adjusted accordingly. It was like, oh, that one was way, way too green. So I scribbled a little green and then I added a lot more like yellow into the next one or something like that. Just so it would be a little bit different too. So Don lives near Beaver Pond, you know. 
Don, you should do this one too then. <laughs> Post a picture of the 11 by 17. Oh, yeah, we'd love to see that, Froggy Fresh. Okay, so here's some white, all right? Okay, I'm going to be a little bit more... Uh, I'll use this a little bit more sparingly in the event that this is indeed um, much more opaque of a pen. Okay, it's that Lan Ren Wang uh, brand, okay? I'm spending a lot of time on this one right here. I really wanted to, you know, I, I haven't done one of these, a live stream. So I'm spending a lot more time on these trees than maybe, you know, if I was doing like a, you know, um, a smaller piece or something like that. But I really want to get this one really shimmering. First of all, because I've been wanting to do this beaver one for a while now. And I don't think, I don't know if I've done these trees in the foreground before. I might have, I, I don't remember. So I wanted to see how that would look. Because normally I have like dark trees in the foreground. Like pine trees and stuff like that. Which I might still do. I might incorporate one in here. Okay. I was trying to think of some additional imagery that I might want to use in this one before I started. But see all that crazy kind of shimmering kind of light like that? I really wanted to get that spirit of it. I'm not going to get it, you know, exactly, because you're not going to replicate what you can see in kind of motion pictures or something like that. But that last kind of frame of the uh, IMAX Beavers movie. There's an IMAX Beavers movie, for those that don't know. And that last kind of crane shot coming coming out of there, um, you know, it had shimmering water and everything like that. It was really awesome. And uh, I don't know. I wanted to get something in that spirit like that. Okay, so let's see. I think that that white is staying in there longer, right? So I think we got it there with those last ones like that. I don't know if I see, I see the yellow a little bit, the, the white, I don't know. You give it another five minutes and I don't know. Let's see. Uh, we were, we were fishing bass boat and there was a beaver dam. Oh, that's awesome. A tree fell into the water. Wow. That must have experienced candy. Uh, bugs. Uh, you can just always catch it in the, the replay or uh, on, uh, I'll do a time lapse, you know, of this one for sure. I, I try to do it of all the kind of longer ones. Okay, so I'm gonna get the trunks here. I always like kind of bringing out the, uh, the trunks of the uh, trees. I don't know if I shook this one up here. Uh, maybe I shouldn't do this in white. Maybe I'll do it in tan a little bit lighter of a tip okay joy has poscas with your scenes just the ones you're using with a hard to pronounce name but I haven't compared them to the pot okay let us know joy if they're um if you find um the pigment content to be higher on those or you can email me i'll be curious to know about that or let me know of any kind of um compare contrast um, types of things with the Poscas. I think the Poscas were more expensive than the other ones, but they might be of a higher quality though. Um, oh, well, one of the things though, Linda, if you want to do those trees like faster, you can kind of hit it with one pad and then go back in. And if you have pens, do the little kind of a, I don't know, whatever, blending color variation types of uh, applications with pens back into that base coat of pad work it's it's a faster way to color um color the you know a large image like that so i might hit it with something like um a green or even like a brown or something like that like a real light tan and then you can come into it and color those other colors in there just so you know that you have kind of a 
a base layer color so that when you stamp it out, it's like, oh my god, I missed that area or something. You know what I mean? Something like that. Okay, so anyways, let's see. I'm going in here. I know this is going to look strange, but it all kind of blends in with um, the white pigment ink. I'm looking for other things to do in here. I'm hitting some of these pine trees in the distance. Okay, let's go with the white. The white's going to stand out much. The white's not going to be so extreme. I was just doing this, and I thought, eh, that's not, that's not um, light enough. But, I don't know, it's not bad going in there and adding kind of a, a darker version at first to see, you know, how it's going to look. And I was just adding in some of those trunks in the background. You know, I, I don't know. It, it, I don't know if it really belongs in there from a kind of a realistic standpoint, but from a visual standpoint of doing artwork, you know, for, you know, we're adjusting things for um, the media that we're using and for visibility purposes, then feel, take liberties with anything that you're doing um, and just do it, you know. Um, that's what, that's what the good thing about artwork is that you can kind of make these things your own, you know what I mean? Okay, I'm having trouble going with this one right here. It's digging into the previous layer of paint and it's going up into the tip here. So let me see if I can get it flowing a little bit faster. Yeah, uh, yeah, birch trees. That, I, when I taught out in um, Maine the first time, that's when I came up with my birch tree stamps. Oh, that's another thing. See, I didn't use my birch trunks Hardly, you know, barely, okay, um, for years after I designed them and released them. But it's when these pens came out like this, you know, that I was able to add that type of foliage into those birch. And I especially love using those birch trunks with um, the vellum, you know, because I can get those trunks laid in there. I can paint them in white. Uh, from the back, and then I can have those birch um, trees, the foliage, on a separate layer on the other side of the vellum. So it really, vellum plus these pens like that, really solved a lot of the issues for me. Because I don't like doing like things like super careful masking or anything like that. If you guys haven't, you know, if you don't know that, um, I really don't like doing kind of like. I'll do it if I need to, but I try to avoid kind of the, what I consider kind of the tedium, you know, techniques of stamping. So, um, yeah, these pens, yeah, specifically for those birch like that. But a lot of people, um, when I was there on my first trip to Maine teaching workshops, more than one person asked about birch trees. Okay, so let's go and I'm adding a little bit more of a, kind of a trunk and branch structure. I'm not following anything in here. I'm just kind of winging it a little bit or I'll completely, not just a little bit. Okay. Oops. That one was like too extreme. Okay. And this one's using the, uh, that more opaque one. Okay. So, All right, all right. Now that wasn't, it wasn't a, I wouldn't call it a good application of um, medium. <laughs> but again, it doesn't matter because I'm just gonna layer over that um, with some additional um, tone, okay? All right, so there's some trunks in the background. So this right here, these trunks like this are giving the scene a little bit more structure in terms of uh, kind of a visual continuity it's a little bit too, it stands out too much, but then you just go back over some of it, right? And you break up that trunk in these areas with, you know, some additional color or leaves in this case, like that.
kind of interesting. I'm not going to do it here, but uh, it'd be interesting to add some kind of little, I don't know, glitter element or something like that into these areas like that. Oh, like, yeah, I forgot about the uh, embossing. Uh, remains to be seen if I'll do the embossing on here. Uh, you know, I, I haven't done this yet, but you know what would be interesting down here is if you add in some of these white dots and you put the clear embossing powder over that. That might even be an even better place to emboss, because I was thinking about the trees, you know, having some of these trees. And I have a video where I've embossed some of those leaf clusters in a clear embossing powder where they're actually standing out. You can't really see it too much until you kind of hold it up like this and you see all these kind of raised dots and they're a little bit more shiny. But down in this area right in here, in water, that would be the place to do it, right? Hmm. Okay, so let's do something right here. Let's hit... Um, let's do a little bit more rendering here. Let's get this beaver guy uh, a little bit more rendered. Sorry again about not being able to zoom in here, but I'm coloring and again, kind of illuminating that beaver a little bit. I don't want to have them too illuminated because it might be like totally like light or something like that. But here's what I'm doing. I'm adding this brown over the beaver. I'm kind of adding a little bit more tone or making it a little bit darker like that, and then transitioning it up like that where it's lighter like that. Okay, again, I'm sorry, I can't, uh, I'm really hesitant to kind of zoom in there. But, okay, so in the water area, okay, it could be reflecting some of that tone, but I usually hit my shadows and I make them a darker version of whatever hue that surface is so if it was a tree that was casting a shadow now i did use black in here okay you know for some of my shadows but in general i start it with the color that that surface represents at you know in terms of this one it's at this point in time you know during sunset it would you know be sunset colors or something like that probably all right so if you're doing a shadow in your trees up here, it'd be kind of a darker green or something like that, being in, in that green meadow area like that, okay? So go like that, and yeah, let's anchor him down a little bit. Let's do use a little bit more of this black, so it's started off with this blue. Okay, let me see if I can get that. Eh, forget it. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I'll figure that focus here sometime. Let's see this, and I'm kind of coming out from that like that. Using that little area like that, so you can kind of come out. Let's go with a little bit more blue like this. Okay, so something like that. It anchors them down a little bit. There's a little bit more continuity between that shadow right there and this one right here. This one he's moving, so I don't want to anchor it down too much. Um, you could walk across that one right there in the foreground, Cecile. So if you need to get to the other side of the pond, rock right across there. We, that's what we used to do out in that uh, beaver dam near us. But the beaver dam near me, it was a lot of wood, but it was a lot more earthen. So we had to be really careful about that. Um, Kevin, you talked yesterday about using bear trees. Yeah, um, I might use some other bare trees in this, but I want to get things kind of established first with that. So here's the thing that I was thinking about. Um, there's a lot of, um, uh, hello Debbie, there's a lot of um, wax in here at this point in time. So I was, I have my stays on pad kind of ready to go if I want to add in some, you know, other types of trees over the top of these other trees that have, might have re achieved, you know, received um, both the acrylic paint pen and colored pencil types of um, applications in there. So, okay, so where would I do that? Let's see here. And I was also thinking about things coming in from the sides. I don't know, like I said, I, I don't want to make things too busy, but we just kind of want to enhance kind of what's already in here. So something like this right in here, I think would be interesting, you know, kind of right coming out of that rock. Let's do that right now. Um, here's another thing though that I was thinking about. I, I, one of the things that's nice about this semi-gloss is that I can use 
my VersaFine Claire on here and it'll dry, but on Glossy, that VersaFine Claire, you know, isn't going to dry at all. So, eeny, meeny, miny. <laughs> uh, let's go with the stays on, okay? One of the things that stays on, I'm gonna have to clean it right after I'm done, so. Okay, let's see here. See, I closed my pad. That was making someone nervous last time. Well, I don't know if it was making them nervous, but, you know, it's making them anxious with my bad stays on technique right here. Okay, so adding this in. I don't know if this tree is really going to show up much. Maybe it shows up a lot, but I don't think so. You know, because the area in the background. This one's a spindly tree, but hopefully we get a little bit of depth and crispness. Um but not at the expense of what's going on in the background. You know, a little bit, because we are covering something up a little bit, but, um, um, oops, <laughs> I need to work faster. Okay, so anyways, that tree is right there. Let me see something here. Okay, that yeah, yeah, that stays on completely stamped over. I'm sorry again about that focusing right there. Yeah, let me see if I can show you that a little bit. I stamped a little bit low here, so I'll, I might shade it or something. Like, eh, see, it's going out of whack. It's going out of focus like that. It just doesn't... Oh, my God. Okay, let me see if this comes back here. Oh, okay. I'm turning off this camera and turn it back on. That's what we did. Coming in. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I'm glad I can turn that off without kind of losing everyone, you know. Okay, so that came out okay. Let's do another one right here. Again, I think I mentioned that this is some of the, f the stuff that I really enjoy doing. I, I li really like adding in these... Um, these finishing kind of touches on things. I mean, I still have a lot of things that I want to do on here, but okay. Quicker kind of release there. That one, another one is up there. Let's go with this. Let's bring this one in, but kind of over here, like about like so, okay. All right, now I have to think about it. I'm going to add in some... Oh, I forgot. I forgot to do this right here. This area I didn't highlight down here yet. Okay, so... Um, let's bring this area, hopefully, to life. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more here. Okay. All right, let's bring a little bit more light into that. I haven't tried punching the camera, but I haven't tried kind of asking. I haven't said please to it either yet. You know, maybe I need to do that. I think I, I think I did. Ding. I think I did say please, or maybe maybe I didn't say please. I think I begged though. <laughs> All right. See if you can see kind of. Yeah, you can see that. You're right. You know, it's amazing to me is um, kind of walking around in Maine. It's all that. It's not just the trees, right? You know, that are. Um, or, uh, you know, that whole area up there. Connecticut, and I'm sure, every, you know, New Hampshire, and, you know, all, you know, the, all those other states up there, but New York, upstate. But um, it's all that. It's all the kind of the the bushes and everything like that turning those colors too that really amazed me it's the low line like ground cover you know that was like reds and like i don't know it's like some of it's like you know it's like it's like this red you know like that super bright red in like the bushes and leaves that were 
so amazing to me walking everywhere it's just like uh, underneath trees it's above your head as well as like you know right 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 at your feet that was so spectacular to me and again it's you know i mean like california we're not getting the four seasons like that it's like southern california so um i don't know it really stood out to me and i th i was walking around uh like acadia national park is uh, there's like this main area, right? Okay. Um, M A I N. And then there's this kind of offshoot in a different area that you have to kind of drive through out of the main loop and whatnot, where it's like on the shoreline area. But, um, uh, what was the, what was the point I was getting at? <laughs> I already forgot. Um, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't know. I was thinking, I, I saw all those different colors in all those different areas like that. It, it was just uh, so spectacular. One area was like mostly like shoreline and rocky shore and stuff like that. Oh, oh, oh here, here. Um, okay, so one day it was raining, okay, while I was out there. And it was raining pretty good. So I went to that shoreline place in that day. But then... I went back into the main park the next day because the rain had gone. And I was thinking, oh, that was a bummer because it was, you know, it was windy and blowing and all that. And I thought, okay, that's too bad because those trees out there, they must have lost about 50% of their leaves or something like that. It looked like that to me. It wasn't as spectacular up in the trees. But then when I was hiking through the, you know, the forested area or something like that, like on, on the floor, all of that color was now like a carpet of all that color, you know which was really amazing. It, it reminded me, it was like all those, it was like the color of like um, fruity pebbles. It was like reds and oranges and whatever that yellow like that, but the, I don't know. It's just interesting to me that I'm walking around in that spectacular area like that. And I'm thinking, oh, this reminds me of fruity pebbles. But it was it was like that color and that intensity of color. Okay, so adding in some of this um, highlighting on some of these branches like this. Anytime you have like um, kind of a a lot of um, texturing and stuff like that, it's like the perfect opportunity for some of this highlighting type of touches right here. And you can kind of be a little bit scratchy about it, and it probably looks a little bit better like that. I used to be a lot more careful about it, and I'm like applying this kind of like perfect little layer of dots or something like that, but um, it almost looks better if you kind of do it a little bit more kind of random and I wouldn't call it haphazard, but a little bit more free spirited maybe like that. It looks a little bit more kind of natural and you get a little bit of extra textures in there with that. You can kind of do a little circle around, like a little knot or something like that in there. All right, but anyway, let's see. The dam's looking a little bit more. I didn't do too much in there, you know. It was just like I was reiterating a lot of the lighter areas like that. But see this little area right here? If you want to get a little bit more texture in there, you can do that. Like that, and see that kind of brings that out in the lighting a little bit more. You can put a little highlight like that. So, you know what I mean? You can use dots whatever you know like that and it gives a little again you're kind of giving it something in common with the rest of the area in terms of the texturing pattern that's going on see this right down here it's looking kind of crazy like that but again the um the white pigment ink is really going to take care of a lot of this down here we want some of it in terms of that shimmery type of touch but you know what i mean i want to mellow a lot of it out too Okay, even on these rocks over here in the distance, you can put a little texture on them like that. I don't want to put too much highlighting in here because it represents a darker area, so it'd stand out a little bit too much. I mean, you can hit it with a gray, you know, pen if you want to or something like that. There's areas up in the mountains like this. You see how this kind of sloping kind of areas all kind of go in that same kind of 
spirit of that angle like that coming off those slopes like that. Remember how we kind of toned in like this from like that and kind of came in like that? And here I'm doing this type of thing. I'll show you on a piece of uh, paper like this. I'm just hitting it like this and I'm kind of going like that. Okay, so it's lighter here and darker down there, right? Well, kind of. So I'm just going to hit it like this a little bit. You can do stuff with paintbrush and white paint or something like that. In here, you can probably, I can probably do this with a white, um, uh, Prisma color or something like that. You can hit your, you know, you can tone in and hit your highlights in there. I, I think I'm out of white though. It's like of all colors, I'm out of white in my uh, Prisma colors there, so. Now again, this would look kind of strange if I just did it on one peak, but if you kind of reiterate it over the, uh, you know, the entire, it doesn't have to be entire range, but just in the lighter areas of the range, it all kind of, you know, blends in a little bit more. I'm kind of getting a little bit better at it here as I go from over here to over here. I'm getting the kind of the touch here. And by the time I get it down, I'm, you know, I'm done and I can't use it anymore. <laughs> you know, so you, gotta, you know, I should probably practice off off screen, you know, or some or off, you know, the scene so I get the, you know, that movement down like that. But again, kind of move it in a direction that's really conducive for your hand like this. See, I, I this isn't going to work for me going like this, but when I turn it around like this, I can just go like this and it's I'm just my f hand is just staying in one position like that, okay? So if I was always working like this, I'm kind of, you know, this isn't really conducive, you know, for a natural movement, but this, you know, is like this. So you just turn your card in the direction that, you know, is going to be the easiest for you to apply a certain type of motion like that, okay? I never do this in the water here, but I don't know, maybe I should. I think it looks pretty good. All right. It came to light. Okay, so the, I, I think those pens worked. What do you guys think? Uh, you see those little white little, you know what I mean? Those ones really, um, the retention of, I don't know, whatever, the contrast seemed to, seemed to stick around in there uh, with those ones. But again, you know, I, I don't think these other ones were a lost cause because it just kind of gave it that kind of overall texturing in there that looks pretty, you know, decent. Um, let's see. I missed some comments up here. Let's see. Uh... Yeah, this one's really, it's really changed here. Uh, Debbie had a comment up there from the beginning to the end. Um... One of the things I'd like to, so Jeannie's commenting here, I'd like to see a video of Jeannie doing her white Dr. Martin's brushwork in her scenes um, with all that texturing and movement that you have going on in there. That would be interesting to see. And you're, I don't know, your different brush touches, you know, your different, I don't know. Are, Jeannie, are you using different brushes when you're applying your, uh, your, um, paint work into your scenes. Sometimes genie scenes are almost like, I, they might be more painting than they are stamping um, in with some of them for sure. Okay, that tree looks pretty, that yellow looked pretty good, this one right here, but Lan, Ren, Wang. Or, okay, I'm going to be putting some of this down here, okay? So it's like, 
you know, this is fall, so I'm going to be putting some of these leaves down here, okay? At the foot of it. Yeah, they can represent highlights too. Um, but I'm putting some of that into that wa um, area down below. I'm going to be putting some of this on my rocks, okay? Like that. So I scattered a bunch of little leaves down there, like so, okay? And, all right, let's see. Okay, I'm, I'm almost forgetting. That there's so much going on in the scene right here. I'm kind of forgetting what some additional things I was going to do in here. So let me add this right in here. I think it'll bring a little bit of extra depth in there. I'll probably use a little bit of the top portion, like over here, maybe. And again, I'm, you know, I'm not certain about which one to use, but I know if the stays on, I just... You know, I'm not going to have to wait for it to dry, so let's go ahead and use this one. I need to use, I need to keep whatever stamps I've used in the stays on away. Look at this right here. This, that stays on dries so fast, I could see on here, there's a little fleck of that paint that it, it pulled off of the page. So, again, I'm just not used to working so fast uh, with my impressions, you know, making the impression. I'll do another scene maybe with the beaver dam like this and this whole type of thing and a quarter page card. A lot of times I do um, these scenes. I'll do a larger kind of format one and really take my time and stuff like that. But then I like to do some easy applications of it, like quicker applications of, you know, something similar in a, maybe a smaller format and everything. All right, as I'm talking here, I think every second counts, right? So another layer here, it's very, you know, unobtrusive because they're spindly and you can see most of the things coming through there, but it gives it a little more depth and that type of thing, I th is that a little wet still? That area right there will kind of give a little bit of a continuity between those trees. I almost can't even see that one back, back in there. <laughs> I had to look. It's hard to see it right in there. It's so spindly. I thought about some overhanging branches in here, but I thought, eh, I don't think that's, you know, I want to do that. It, the format seems to kind of be moving up. Everything's kind of pointing upwards here, you know, and again, here's that little passageway kind of getting to that area, and these two peaks are like pointing up, so I didn't want to have something kind of coming in this way. Um, I, I, I mean, I think it would be okay, and especially if we needed it, but I don't think we need it in here. I think it might, everything is already looking fairly busy in here. Okay, let's try to use some of the white pigment ink. So we've done all this to get to this moment right here. And this is the moment where kind of the fun starts to be begins. <laughs> and that's for me at least. I love putting in, I, I love doing all this little detail work like that with the, the pens. On this one, it was a little bit extreme with the, uh, the trees because there's just, there's just so many of them. But this is really um, a fun thing to do. And it's something, again, that I always recommend people try. If you haven't done this before, you're probably going to have the materials. Okay, you don't have to use the Brilliant Sinks either. For years, I was not not, I was avoiding the Brilliant Sink for this effect, actually. Because it dries really fast, okay. But I'm just used to it, so... I used, um, you know, you can use your Hero Arts or whatever, white pigment ink, Stampin' Up, whatever, okay? Uh, Debbie's got the Dr. Martens. You're going to love it in terms of a textural pattern. Do you have an old toothbrush? Get get an old toothbrush and uh, get one of those, get one of those, hopefully, that doesn't have, like, the gum stimulators. And what I realized fairly, I don't know, recently, when someone is talking about these, they couldn't find these just 
nothing toothbrushes anymore. Everything comes with like those gum stimulators and you know those little rubber things. But I don't think that gives um, as easy uh, an application of that splatter pattern if you're using it that way. Okay, so Jeannie, you do use different brushes. Sometimes your fingers, ah. Your God-given brushes there with your fingers, huh? Okay, so adding this in, but okay, so this gets really frayed when you just kind of dab it into your pad like that, right? So what I'm doing is I'm doing this and then I'm taking this like this and it smashes it down where it's nice and smooth like that. And kind of, see, I'm kind of squishing this down a little bit more, or a lot more, to make it more dense. So I've gotten rid of about half of the volume, I would say, of this cotton ball. So it's much denser, okay? So that's kind of key here, okay? Um, so it's just not, when you're adding it down, it's not fraying everywhere, okay? But you don't want it so dense that it's just like a big ball, okay? And you don't want to use too much of ink, okay? Everyone, when they first do that, it, me too, when I get a brand new pad, it's like, oh my god, I'm using like too much, you know. So um, it just leaves you a big ball of, you know, like paint on there if, you, if it's all salt. And a lot of you, even if you've had kind of your white paint pads, paint, see, I call it paint, white uh, pigment ink pads, um, a lot of it is like super juicy, so you have to kind of be careful about that. Mine, I keep it kind of dry. I have two of these pads, one I use for to make impressions from, and the other one I use just for this cottony type of foggy application. Okay, but what you do is you start this in your lighter areas, just to kind of get a feel for it. You can't see anything applying at all, right? Okay, so that distresses people when they first start it off. So oftentimes they go like this, and it's a big blob of pain, okay? But just lightly dab it, okay? So let's start going in here. And where this is really effective looking is where light meets darker, okay? It doesn't have to be dark. It could be like this amount of darker, which is a light, super light blue, okay? But you kind of move it into those areas like that. So you start on the light, and then you work into the darker object or area or something like that. So see? And I'm, I'm, I'm familiarizing myself with how dry this pad is, too, or how wet it is, okay? If it's super wet, then blot it off a lot before you take it on here. Mine's always different because I'll re-ink my pad, but then you see that lighting starting to appear. And I, it didn't happen just with, you know, one, you know, application of it. I'm, I probably tapped it like 30 times in there. And it's just a little bit lighter, okay? But see what's happening right there? That's where this kind of starts to come into play. And then I put a little bit more in the lighter area. And then as I move in like this into those darker areas, I just do a little bit less tapping, a little bit lighter tapping, so it goes from light to darker out here. So when we're applying dark to light, we're applying it from the outside to inside, but when we're applying light to dark, it's often from the inside out. It's the opposite direction, so you start in here and work this way, or if you're over here, then you work over here, and then you work in this way. This is going from dark to light in here, so if I'm doing it here, I'm starting in light, and then I'm working up that way like that. Okay, so see, I'll show you exactly what's happening here, too. Okay, so see, I, I, I can barely see anything. That, that, that's way too dry, okay? But it's better, better safe than sorry, though, okay? So I'm going like this, and coming up into that uh, beaver dam a little bit, like that. So I'm having a little bit of this lighting kind of coming up in here and it's a built you know it's a real textural difference it looks something that looks much softer again okay i want to zoom in here but okay i'm going to leave it like that okay now i don't want to do it over everything okay so i've edited it right here and then maybe i'll hit a little bit of it down here but i'll leave this area as is so in other words you're just kind of oscillating things a little bit or a lot uh, from a lighting standpoint it's a textural standpoint too okay Okay, it got really busy around in these dots in here, so I'm going to decrease the contrast between some of those dots and the background, making the background lighter so they're not as visible. 
and it's just a softer light, okay? So we have this tree right here going into the lighter area and going into, the trees are light, but you're making them lighter like this, okay? So see this tree right here, kind of capturing some of that light like that? So it doesn't look like it's being illuminated like that now, okay? Now if I edit it down here, it would really stand out, but this is right next to the light like that, okay? But see, this looks like a nice contrast here, so I, maybe I won't tone that out. I mean, you could. It's not going to be wrong, but I just think it looks more effective to play contrast next to each other. It's kind of darker and lighter and sharper and softer there. So the soft looks even softer by having something crisp next to it. That's why these trees are down here too, okay? Okay, one of the things um, that I'm doing too is I'm viewing this from arm's distance. I'm not just kind of toning down like this and then going over here and then kind of losing track of how it's affecting the overall, okay? All right, so let's add it down here. And pigment ink dries darker than what it looks, so, you know, if it looks like, oh my God, I went too light, let it kind of set up a little bit and then see how it looks. Um, when it dries a little bit, you know, you don't have to wait like 10 minutes or something like that. It's, you know, often a matter of seconds. It's like the, uh, the pens, how they started to turn a little bit. All right, but do you see this right here? See this tree like that, you know? Let's, see, it's, dark, it's getting darker, so I'm going to put more there, like that. And look at that illumination. So this illumination is like bouncing off this maybe and kind of coming back up into here. It makes it look a little bit more airy and rich from a textural standpoint. Let's put some fog underneath this tree right here. This is where I didn't really worry about, um, you know, my pen work on those trunks right in here because, okay, now here I am going into a darker area like this from a dark area, but I, I think this looks really good at the base of trees like this. Okay, so see that right there? A little bit of fog. If you like it, then just keep adding a little bit more and more like that. But doesn't it look more, the light to me in this piece looks a little bit more dreamy with these types of little touches like this. And they're really fun to add in like that because it's like this little fog rolling in or something like that. So see, here's the oscillation of it. Here's some of it here. Here's some of it down here, some of it here. I'll leave it as is right in here. And again, I'm just, I'm pointing this out just to say that, I mean, you could just fog everything in and it would represent a really foggy day. But um, you can, like I said, but then you would lose some certain amounts of contrast in there, okay? And again, it might look, it, you know, it might look really good like that too. But um, for me, I tend to go for a lot more contrast. Okay, see this beaver lodge right here? See how I made this area on this side darker um, and this side's lighter, okay? So let's put some of this lighting in here like this. So it's, it's like the light is coming from back here, but now it's kind of bending around here on the, you know, it's like illuminated fog or something like that. And let's put some of it on this side of this lodge like this. like that it's kind of like the lighting is coming coming in here now because it's kind of bending around like that which it could do because if there's fog in the air if there's some moisture right here it's illuminating that moisture where it's and it's bouncing off of that and reaching around a little bit like you know into that connective i don't know whatever moisture in the air okay all right so let's keep going on here so like that in there I'll leave it right here as is, but I'll add a little bit of pigment ink here. Sometimes I will add a little bit more in the distance, you know, just because things in the distance tend to look a little bit lighter too. You 
using brushes for stamps. Um, what was that on the brushes there? Oh, fingered out. Yeah, on with with rubber with rubber stamps, they are really really tough. Okay, I don't know if I've used um, a scouring sponge like you know like a kitchen sponge on them, but you I wouldn't be surprised if you can't. I wouldn't do it on super delicate things like this, but if you had to, it can they stamps can 100% rubber stamps can really take a beating. All right, adding in that lighting in the background like that. Okay. I can now see this area right in here in the mountains. Okay, let's add, try some of this in here. Now you could do a lot of this, you know, just by removing some ink off of your stamp before you stamp it out. But if you were here uh, during that first video, I was saying that I'm just going to stamp most of my things dark okay so i can make my decisions you know i if i want to make things lighter i can always do it with the white pigment ink but if you already kind of know okay i want my trees in the distance to be lighter or something like that to represent something farther in the background one of the things you can do is you can just blot it off before you stamp it out so it's just inherently lighter where you don't have to go in and do you know that type of thing you know to get that look okay so we'll have some of this fog kind of rolling over this mountain. It doesn't really show up in here because it's so light to begin with, you know, white over light. But let's just take a look and see. See, this is a little bit lighter in the background here, so I'm going to give this a little bit of a, like a cloudy kind of mist, you know, right in here. It's going over some of this tree, and it looks pretty good, I think. Like about like so. Um, this area right here, I think, can use um, something different, okay? So I'm going to create a little bit of separation between this and the background, so I'll just add this in here. Like this. So this is a little bit more diffused back in here, and you've added some light, and then you have this crisp lodge like that, so it stands out from the distance you know, just a little bit. I mean, you can have it stand out even more if you make this even lighter. I'm not going to make it so too light, okay? But, I mean, you could. It wouldn't be wrong to do that. Let's see... I know people that used to um, put their full wooden stamps. Does anyone ever do that? They put it all under the sink and used to scrub it off. There are some people that uh, may, I don't know, maybe some people that like, they like to have their stamps like absolutely sparkling clean um, all at all times, you know, Af after usage, of course. But I was saying, you put your whole wooden stamp under, you know, in the water? They said, yeah. <laughs> and that was something I definitely wouldn't recommend, you know. But they did. I don't know if they did it for 20 years, you know. You know, and if it would still be mounted to that wooden stamp, you know, with that, you know, that type of usage. Or that type of cleaning, I guess. Okay, let's go, let's make some of this area up in here. I don't think I need to make this too much softer looking. It's already kind of soft, but I'll add it into my sky where that white is kind of merging. I, okay, I think this white pad is like really dry. Let me go into my, my impression brilliance pad. This is my cotton brilliance white pad, and this is my regular pad right here. I could just re-ink my other one, but let's just use this here. I'll, cover that up a little bit. Oh, thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, uh, Debbie. Thanks, Crystal Fire. It's not my birthday today, but weekend. 
If people don't remind me, I, w I wouldn't even remember that. Well, I guess I would look, you know. I don't know. It's like, I, I haven't really thought about that too much. It's like you get to that right after a certain age, it's like, eh. But I do appreciate it, though. Thanks so much. And I'm going to have a um, kind of a stamping birthday marathon. So I'm going to stay on for every... Um, the, the stamping marathon is going to be for as many... One year equals one hour of the marathon uh, tomorrow. Or starting at, like, what is it? It would start at midnight, right? So let me see. So that would be, that would be 24, that would be a 24-hour marathon then, if one year equals one hour of the marathon, right? <laughs> I'm joking, folks, if, you know, if you don't know. Okay, a little bit more. That fog down there, that looks really good right there, doesn't it? A little bit of a fog at the base there. It kind of mellows out, you know. Shade anchors the, um, um, that dam into, the, it anchors everything into the scene a little bit, you know, um, shadow. But also light can do it, you know, that texturing like that. It kind of incorporates it into the piece let's put a little bit let's put a little bit of a kind of a light coming off the top of the uh you know uh dam like that see it's a little bit lighter like that so it's it changes it up you know just in that little area like that um we'll put a little bit of you know what happened the, the beaver looks the beaver looks lighter for did i put some pigment ink on there already i'm gonna make them a little bit darker That's a little bit better. Oh, maybe not enough here. <laughs> I guess it is like a pretty main, important focal point of the scene, so I'll give it a little bit more mass like that, okay? With black. All right, let's see here. Let's take a look. A little bit of a difference though, right? in terms of the um, the coloring in there. Vanessa's stamps have to be clean. I don't like to use inks that stain. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I didn't, I avoided stays on for a long time, but I'm finding the stays on, like I said, it cleaned off my stamps, you know, with just with water. I didn't, I didn't want to use, um, not that stays on cleaner damages or anything like that, okay? I don't know that, but I just didn't want to have to go through the hassle of specifics, okay? I mean, I will if I absolutely have to, but I, I just take um, paper towel and I just, you know, scrub that off and it just comes right off just with water on, on a paper towel, I'm finding. Um, okay, so yeah, Candy's someone that maybe maybe you're the one that told me, you know, I don't know if you told me that years ago, Candy. But um, yeah, I remembered someone, uh, you know, they take their wooden stamps and they put them right in the sink or I think a lot of people did that. Hello, Jen. Thanks so much. Oh, your dad's birthday would have been tomorrow. Wow. I knew one of my friends in high school had the same birthday, and I met someone in college with the same birthday um, when I was in the dorms. It was like, what's your birthday? And they said, it's like, wait a minute. And I remember I said, no, wait, that's my birthday. And they said, no, that's their birthday. And that, they were one year older than my, me, so they said, well, they, they, they were that birthday first. <laughs> okay, let's, I, I want a little bit more highlighting on some of these um, branches within the, uh, the lodge. 
it's just a little tight little detail like this okay I don't think you, you can see this because I'm not zoomed in sorry okay so I'm just putting some I'm just kind of going over some of those yeah you can kind of see it a little bit see that one branch like that it's just standing out a little bit more I don't want it white or anything that's not what it's representing but just kind of going in there like so Let's see there. Oh, what, Sue, so, so your dad's birthday's on uh, July 31st then, huh? Kevin is, I am four months younger than your sister. Oh, okay. Uh, your sister was born in uh, 1990 then? <laughs> All right. Everyone see see this area right in here? Does anyone remember what that looked like all there? It was kind of drab down there before, right? When we started this off. Um, in terms of the lighting. But you see what I mean? But by the time all that gets laid down in there, you know. And see how busy this area... I'm going to try, okay, to zoom in here a little bit. But see how busy this area gets in here with all those dots? But then see, when you put in that, you know, that white ink like that, it mellows it out a little bit, or a lot. It kind of tames, it like tames the wild beast, you know, of a textural beast, I guess you can say. Sometimes it's impression issues or something like that, coloring for sure, okay? But it just take it takes care of all those types of things for me. <laughs> and again, it's not that you have to do that, okay? You know, the uh, white pigment ink. But I'm telling you, um, like in a scene like this one where, you know, certain things can come up. Um, continuity and stuff like that. This, I don't have to, wor you know, really worry about a lot of different things that might kind of come about in that process if I end up this way too. And plus from a visual standpoint, I just think it looks, you know, a little bit more interesting um, with these types of things like this. There, There's this thing, it occurred to me that's in stamping where maybe there's some softer types of applications. Like if you're doing some stipple brushes and you're applying your inks that way, that can have a real soft look to it. But most of the time, if not 99% of the time in rubber stamping, okay, that from an imagery standpoint, um, everything is um, crisp, right? We don't want blurry images, right? Or, you know, bleeding imagery or something like that. So everything is always crisp like that. But this is a way to go back in and add a little bit of variation into these designs like that. And it makes it gives them a little bit more of a contrasting range of text, you know, from a textural form like that, which you would see, you know, in nature, you'd see, you know, things out in the distance or whatever. It doesn't have to be nature. You know, if you look at something from a distance, it just, it's not as in focus. Okay. So this adds that lighting to it. And I think just, you know, people like soft things in life, you know, if you see, you know, some soft puppy or something like that, you know, you really feel like going up and petting it. Or, you know, you walk into Costco and there's that, you know, those super soft, you know, types of blankets and you're, you just, you know, if you don't go up and touch it, you know, it probably... I don't know, you did at one point in time, or I don't know, it occurs to you, you feel compelled to go in there. Well, you know what I mean? I'm not saying that, you know, when someone sees something soft within a scene like this, they feel compelled to go touch it or something like that. But it has that kind of inviting type of um, texture to it, I guess, in some ways, you know. And in a scene, in scenes, a lot of times I have like some kind of distant lighting in there. So, 
if you have something kind of illuminated in the background or something like that, you know, you feel a little bit more inclined to go enter something like that, okay, you know, than some, if there was some dark room or something like that, you know, you might, but if you have this little passageway of light or something like that, and if it looks really like a soft light and not like a harsh light, right, even more so, so this is a way to just go back in and, you know, and take care of a lot of that type of, uh, um, those types of visual, I don't know, whatever considerations like that. So I'm adding a little bit more here. My wetter, you know, pigment ink pad. This is, it's dry and it's kind of changing, you know, um, the look of it. It gets, like I said, it moves a little bit more tran towards transparency, so you can't see it as much. But, and if you like something and you want to add a little bit more kick to it, then, you know, you just add it in here. If you, you can add it in here like that, sometimes it gets rid of the crisp little reflective dots so you can go back over it too if it kind of blended it out a little bit too much. You can go back in with your pens and, you know, um, add additional touches right over the top of those foggy little areas, you know, where it'll stand out a little bit more again. So you don't have to see, like, this as being, like, the end-all thing, like, oh, okay, I can't go back in there. Now, I can't go back in this area right in here and color it more with green. I can't really apply um, dye-based inks or something like that or colored pencil over the top of this layer of pigment ink. I'd be scratching away into it, you know, for the most part. I guess if you really had to, you can kind of take a paper towel and just wipe it away to get through that pigment ink overlay and then you can do it again and then go back over it again if you want to. I don't, you know, most of us, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to encounter that, but I'm just saying that you probably could do something like that if you really had to. But anyway, I think that is it with that. Let's see here. Uh, George Jetson was born on, really, on July 31st, 2022. Wow. Huh. Oh my god, Froggy Fresh, you are kidding me. They put their fro they put their stamps in the dishwasher to dry, though, right? They don't run the cycle, right? <laughs> I think you're saying that they run the cycle on them, though. It, with, I wonder if that's their clear stamps or rubber stamps. Ah, that would be... I guess that would work. Thanks so much, Eve. It's fun to do that. Yeah, paper and paper and inks, you know. Who vanished their wooden stamps so the ink wouldn't stain. <laughs> Can you imagine running, um, putting your stamps in the dishwasher? It, hey, you know, if that works, you know, sometimes I have like 20 stamps that 30 that I need to clean. And if that thing, if that worked like that, well, when it would be a nice solution. I guess it works for them. You know, it's not ruining their stamps. I'm in, you know, unless you're saying that they did it, you know, for the first time or something like that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I know, Jeannie. Yeah. The bizarre thing for me was when I, uh, you know, when I qualified for um, AARP several years ago. It's like, what? You know, I got an application for that. Uh, let's see. Oh, did Debbie take, oh, okay, did Debbie take off there? Good night. Oh, yeah, Debbie, it's late for them. Kittens. I have to touch soft kittens. Put a little kitten in your scene. In every scene you do, Froggy Fresh, you just put little, little, some little cat walking around in there. Or everyone loves cat videos, huh? Like real cat videos, though. So I should put a cat, like, in my scenes, you know. Uh, good night, Don. Yeah, Don, it's 10 o'clock there. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the cookies, uh... Uh, the chocolate chip cookies there. Okay, let me, let me, I have, um, this matting here, let's see. This is going to look much more vibrant too, um, when spray sealed. So I 
cut this piece out. I was thinking this is such a big piece, I should probably mount it on like a regular full-size piece of paper and then trim it after I have it mounted because, you know, I'm going to have to get it right right here. So let me see if I can get kind of the gist of it about how much space is around here. This is probably not perfectly square either. So I'm going to do that right here. See that little border right there? I like doing a real thin border like that to kind of mimic the little dot kind of pattern, the lighting size that's within my scene. So it's usually just a real thin border like that uh, on my interior mat. It's so huge though, you know, I'm hoping that I can get it on there uh, straight enough. Like I said, I, it occurred to me that I probably should have just done it on a full size piece of paper eight and a half by 11 and then trim it afterwards because then I don't have to be get it right when I lay this down here so let's go let's go all the way across like that okay this stuff is really really uh it's 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 hard to reposition this when I lay it down so let's see here Yeah, okay, that's close enough, like that. It's a little bit... It's a little bit... Where is it? I thought I went a little bit high, but that's not too bad. Alright, one more layer here. Oh, let's see... I... I got... I've had that AARP membership for several years now. <laughs> it, you know, I feel inclined to say, I'm sorry to say, but I don't know. We should be, a, you know, I'm a proud member of AARP. <laughs> it gives me my discount on, uh, what was it? Uh, um... Uh, my cell phone uh, service, cell phone. Uh. I use Consumer Cellular for my uh, cell phone service. Oh, okay. It would stand a reason that I'd run out of this during this big piece right here. All right, let's see. I've been known to sandpaper my heavy w stained wood stamps. Oh, you're sandpapering like the bottom side of it or and the sides maybe to get it real clean. Oh, you know what some people used to do? Remember I someone was mentioning nail um uh remo polish remover, right? I think I know what I was thinking about. Now, when we were talking about this, it was nail, clear nail polish that they used to paint in this area around in here so that the bottom side wouldn't get stained with um, ink. That's what it was. It was nail polish. It was nail polish. It wasn't nail polish remover. Ah! All right, that's what it was. All right, let's see here. Okay, we're ready to roll, literally here. Okay. Um, Uh, I should probably spray seal this before I mount it on here because then I'm spray sealing everything, but I'm just going to do this. That's what I would do if I wasn't, you know, broadcasting this right here. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me see how much space I have around here. Okay, so it's about a quarter inch. I'm getting my bearings here. If you go a little bit higher and have a little bit more space down below, that's what they usually do with, you know, matting. So... 
if I do miss, I'd rather miss high. Okay, so let's see. I think I'm a little bit left, but eh, close enough. All right. Someone is asking me about this paper right here. It's just legal size um, copy paper. They noticed it was it was larger than um, eight and a half by eleven, and I've been asked um, after these videos, you know, um, in an email form or something like that, if people, you know, people want to know, you know, like what this was, you know. And I just tell them it's just, um, now I do have some 11 by 17 that I've used before, but for the most part, I'm using the, just the legal size. And I, you, know, you can get this at Staples or Office Depot or something like that. Okay. I've got paint all over my fingers, so it's showing on this. Okay, so this is just a piece of dark, um, super dark blue glossy cardstock, but it's, um, you know, you can get black. It's almost black right here but there we go there's a big card there a big damn card d-a-m not d-a-m you know n and let's see okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna zoom in like that okay i'm just gonna leave it like that so let's take a look here all right let's see here i'll spread this out a little bit so you can see the card. My first dam card, <laughs> beaver dam card, in a while. And I wanted it big, and I wanted it kind of vibrant too. And I've been wanting to do more of the uh, fall types of uh, tones in here. So do it all in one. And like I said, I haven't been on it in a, I don't know, like a week and a half. or I don't know what it was like that so I thought I'd do something a little bit larger this is what I need to remember to do anytime I'm doing a full-size card I need to this is about an I cut it down about an inch off the sides that's why it's seven and a half by ten okay because I don't have like 12 by 12 paper to mount things on so you know this is just an eight and a half by eleven so that would be better you know I need to remember that um, anytime I'm doing a full-size piece like that so um, yeah. Let's see, what are people saying here? Going to do one of these scenes. I'm holding you accountable. Linda, I look forward to seeing your 10 versions of this, um, tomorrow. <laughs> Crystal Fire Creation, I'm going to be 52 this year. Ah, you're young, you know. Okay, Jeannie and I, Jeannie, okay, you and Jeannie are going to do this one, huh? Polish your wood, interesting. Oh, Jeannie tried to polish the top wood and it smeared off the image. So that was a screen printed or a pad printed image on top of the wood there. Yeah, with certain types of polishes, it would put the ink back into um, solution, probably. There are certain types of inks that they printed on tops of stamps. I use Mylar um, stickers, but a lot of companies, you know, I did stamping on top of my wood initially, and they were using certain types of ink that were like solvent-based inks. It's probably like Stazon. It wasn't Stazon, but I'm just talking about the type of inks that were often used. And then they switched to a, a soy ink that became much easier to print out. And um, I wouldn't imagine if, I wouldn't be, or I wouldn't be surprised if the soy ink really um, smeared if you tried to do anything to it um, like that. Um, yeah, Vanessa, that's what a lot of people used to do with the wood stamps is the nail polish like that. Um, and I remember several people uh, mentioning that then you know they just didn't like they don't want that wood to be stained and it you know it would keep them really nice I would think on that bottom side of it so and that's back to when everyone was using um, it was all dye based inks at the time so you know you get that water-based medium on there and it's not going to be any kind of issue at all 
stays on would, I'm sure, um, adhere to that nail polish, but I'm sure it would clean off really easy though, if you were using something like that type of ink on there. Froggy Fresh well stained stamps means they're well loved. Yeah, that's true. Um, my wooden stamps that I've been using, some of them I've been using probably for 30 you know, years since the beginning of this company, I'm still using. I don't think I have any in my demo stamps that are um, hand indexed though at this point in time, um, but a lot of them are really old and definitely stained. So sometimes I see um, stamps on eBay or something like that, you know, and like that, and sometimes it's like completely black down there. And I think, okay, that that's a good sign, right? Like that you know, because that means that you know someone has really enjoyed that stamp. Not that a clean one, but you know, people are you know that want that keep their things, but all stamps want to be used, you know, in terms of uh, you know, kind of their main purpose in existence in life. I use a lot of glue, yeah, but Linda, though I I. On something like this, I want it really completely flat, you know, for something like this. Um, and then I bought like a lifetime supply of those refills. So um, yeah, I get a ton of it. Uh, yeah, okay, the legal size, I, I've always found it in staples or, you know, in that paper row um, at all those, you know, Office Depot, Office Max, all those types of uh, stores like that. Um, I don't know if they would have it in like you know, like Target or something like or Walmart, probably not, but definitely in the office supply places that would uh they'd have the uh the legal size if they stole there, you know what I mean? There's supply chain problems these days and whatever, so you know, for all I know, they're out of copy paper in general, but um, you know, they should have it in the regular inventory if they have everything that they normally carry. I don't think there was different versions of it. There weren't like there wasn't like a, a legal size cardstock or something like that that I know of, but definitely the copy paper. Um, yeah. Uh, even if it's a damn card, yeah. <laughs> this is the nicest damn card that I've made this week, you know. Can you buy Mylar stickers? Uh, what stickers do you want, Jeannie? Do you have to re-sticker something? Sometimes the, the larger pieces, if there's a lot of um, changes in temperature, um, like especially one of the things that occurred to me is when I was out in stores in Arizona, um, if any, like a larger stamp, there's going to be a lot more um, um, variation in wood dimensions the larger something is so there's going to be more give so sometimes there would be like a um like a ridge in that um label just because the you know in a drier environment over time that piece of wood shrunk so that label would have this little ridge like that um maybe in other areas it got really cold and you know um and if it's in a store environment you know, when they leave the store, they're, you know, they're not leaving like the heater running in there. So it got really cold at night. So you get this, um, that also is um, potential retraction going on like that. So drying, you know, expansion, retraction type of thing. So sometimes it's, yeah, you know, if you put that label on, if you're talking about a woodman stamp in the environment, that's going to be very consistent in someone's home, then there's going to be less, it's going to be less prone to that than say something in a, um, a store environment, yeah. Okay, we'll have to hit paper row now. Paper row. <laughs> no, and no, I know you meant by that, Janie, but is there like a specific ones or something like that? Um, if it comes to Stanscape Sims, if it was on a wood mounted, if it's offered in a wood mounted version I might have those stickers still. Some of those, some of those I ran out. So I've been doing, if someone orders a wood mounted stamp, I have to do this thing called, uh, what was it called? Um, it's, it's this thing that you run through a, like a laser printer or something like that. And it makes these, um, um, stickers. Yeah. Wide scotch tape might work for labeling the wood stamps. 
Uh, huh. Packaging tape. Oh, are you talking about layering over like a mylar? There used to be a company that laid down a sticker on their wood and then they would put this whole mylar or something wrap around that entire wood. And that one was um, uh, marks of distinction. They're, um, they did a lot of things like angels and um, uh, copyright free illustration like 19th, 20th century, early 20th century engravings. And his pieces were really, his, his stamp constructions were really awesome looking. It's super time consuming, um, but uh, yeah. But I think Jeannie was talking about the actual image stickers though, right Jeannie? If that's what you're talking about, you're not talking about a wrap around your sticker. Woodman, you're talking about your Woodman stamps, right too? I'm sure. I'm looking at my scene here. Let me see, my scene's a little bit, let me see here. Okay, there. It's exposing. That's the. That's what that scene looks like a little bit more. It's exposing for all this. Um, paper. Let me see. Let me take this away here. Okay, there we go. My camera was exposing. Kind of having a tough time exposing for all that white paper in there. So you can get a kind of a better gist of the uh, the values and color intensities in here. And it's still sick. Ah, okay, but anyway. I'm trying to think if I need to do anything else in here now. Some days when we're sitting around here chatting, it occurs to me to do something else in here on these scenes. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll just leave it like that. Okay, um, let's see. Packaging tape works. Self-adhesive clear shelf lining paper. Candy, do you use that on your pieces? Does it stick to the, um, is it pretty permanent after you've adhered it to that? Let me see, beeswax. Oh, beeswax was wrapping like that? When you said beeswax, I was thinking of um, mirror image. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if I've seen beeswax their stamps before. I know I know their line and everything like that and imagery, but I'm trying to think if I remember seeing one of their their wood mounted stamps. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, Eugenie, I can possibly get those. I you know don't ask me for a hundred of those though. But if I have those though, I don't know. Now, why would you want those, Jeannie? Don't you already have those? Um, uh, stickers, you know, your, 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 your stamps are already, la uh, mounted, aren't they? Or do you have it, are some of them peeling off or something like that? They shouldn't be, but Jeannie, you've moved from, let me see, you've moved from, you probably got a lot of those when you were in New York, right? Anyway, you know what I was thinking about doing? I think I'm going to sign this piece right here. I never sign my pieces, but... I was thinking on that, on these like larger format ones, why not? Let me see if this pen works right here. Okay, let's see. All right, first signed piece in probably, I don't know, like two decades, probably. I think that's my name. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Jeannie. Yeah, uh, drop me a list of codes or something like that, and I'll see, uh, you know, about getting you some uh, of those. I'll pull some of those. K 
Kevin Ross. <laughs> I need to watch one of those videos sometimes. All right. Oh, anyone have a anyone have a, a name for this piece? Does it evoke anything? Don't say um, big damn scene <laughs> or big damn card. I don't, I don't know what this one would be called. I don't, I, I think I would probably, I don't know, for me, I'm probably leaning more towards the autumn kind of aspect of it. You know, um, uh, I don't know, help me out here if anyone's still on. <laughs> My best damn work yet. That would be um, that would be fitting for this one. I think it's 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 definitely my best Beaver Lodge. I've never done like a larger format. I think I think one of the cards that I have up is um, it might be a half page using that Beaver Dam just because I wanted to use the whole thing and uh, I wanted to use the Lodge in there. Now, if you're doing this on a smaller card, I mean this would be a kind of a cool scene just like right here too. You know, this is like. This would be like a half page format like this. Like if you just looked at it. I think this would be fine for a scene like this. Um, like this in here. I think that'd be pretty cool like that. Um, and this kind of elongated format would really mimic this. That's one thing about this dam here. It's kind of going long like that. And it you know, ideally maybe this would go, you know, would be a longer piece like that to, you know, reiterate that. But I wanted to get some background mountains in here. That's why I went with this portrait style of uh, formatting here with the dam. You know, I wanted to create this kind of little passageway like this going up through in here. So that's why I went like that. But my first inclination was to go landscape just to reiterate, you know, the dominant visual in the scene which is the dam like that and i guess it would you know these in the background there you know they're horizontal too so it would fit that more but i don't know i i had other ideas with those trees you know that i wanted to utilize in there so <laughs> see if i put something like that up there though okay if i post this on a uh, you know, like Facebook or something like that. That's people are going to think, you know, people, there are some people that think that's the way you spell damn, you know, in terms of the expression, you know, so Steve, the beaver, I was wondering, I was going to say, does anyone have a name for that beaver in there when I was doing that beavers in the mist? Hey, I like that one. Beaver falls. There, well, that would be a good one too, but I don't have so much of a fall type of thing in there but that makes me want to i was thinking about doing um some falls in the background like right up in this area right here amanda um but i want i want to do a couple more pieces i, I do i definitely want to do a couple more of these beaver dams before i put it away um i haven't really explored it but this would look really good with a fall right in here or something like that linda's going to do 10 versions of this with the falls though so we'll be able to see what that looks like um with the falls in here tomorrow. I don't know, is Linda still here even? Oh, Linda's there right here. Lodge retreat, that's cool. So what was there? Lodge, Steve, <laughs> Steve the beaver. <laughs> beaver falls, lodge retreat, beavers, uh, beavers in the mist. That sounds very, uh, I like that name there though. I wanna do, you know, if I, we did something like, I think if I did something like, um, more like Twilight, that Beavers in the Mist is kind of a real evocative um, name. It makes me want to do something even more misty in this type of uh, setting right here. Life is just one damn project. <laughs> River Lodge. That's a good one. Um, what do you call it? Um, like if you have like a you know, like a poolside view or something like that. You can say like Riverside 
lodge in there. I don't know, whatever, yeah. Something like in the, that spirit there. Uh, the mayor, I've thought about that too, yeah. So if we do this lodge and this whole area right down here um, in that mirror card, but put this right on the top of it, I think that would look pretty cool, you know. Those mirror cards, though, too, those mirror cards are really fast to do. And if you're using this image um, in a mirror card situation, it would go really fast because you would be filling in so much of the uh, space in there. Um, yeah, that would be a good idea. Oh, here, here's the thing that I was thinking about doing, too. Is there a way to do those mirror cards where you have something like this, but then you'd have like a, you know, a tiered area where there's two mirrors, you know? Is there a way to do some kind of fold, you know, where it's like going down and then it's out and then another thing going down? I've, I've seen that um, that big three-dimensional piece that someone did on the uh, Stampscapes Facebook group. It was this big production with um, like, uh, you know, cricket cutout types of things in there too, where they built it up. And I'm, I'm guessing that thing flattened out where they can send it. I don't know. It looks so huge, though, with all that stuff in there. I wasn't quite sure. Okay, so Linda seconded Beavers in the Mist. Spirit of the Beaver. That sounds good, too. B&B &B Lodge. Oh, that's really good, too. All right, so what, uh, you know. So Beavers in the Mist has two votes right there. I like that one too, though. Um, or it can be Lodge Light. Um, housing. Um, affordable housing in the mist. <laughs> affordable waterside housing. <laughs> Waterfall card. It can be done. So, Linda, so it's, is that what it's called? So we can do like a tier, like you can do like a regular card stock, right? And then we can do like a tier and then, you know, another tier, maybe where it's like, you know, so because a lot of these beaver things like this, it's not just one dam and one big pool. It's like there's another tier down here, you know, where those beavers, they just do like, you know, like tier after tier after tier like that. That's what I thought would be kind of cool. Um, yeah. A day in the life of Steve the Beaver. I think that's what that Beatles song was uh, going to be called. Except it was too long, so they just called it a day in the life, right? <laughs> Made it back just in time. We're thinking of a name here, PJB. So, um, what was that? What was the Beavers in the Mist? Of course, it's just one. If we combine that with froggies, it would be Steve the Beaver in the Mist, but that's a little bit too long. <laughs> the Dam Project. Of course, if we use that Dam word in there, you know, that would probably get. It would be, it would be more attention getting. That's for sure, right? Just in terms of people reading that thing, they're white, they, you know, they read it and then like, what was that? You know, that Dam Mist you know, or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like Beavers in the Mist. Uh, it's, uh, that's the only one that got seconded there. In this, uh, I don't know. Do we have any objections to that? I'm indifferent right here. I, I, I couldn't think of anything. But I've always left it up to you guys anyways. <laughs> hey, that, one's, that, that one's good too. We're gonna have to, all right, uh, Linda, are you getting some of this down? Linda, you're gonna, Linda, for those 10 different ones that you're gonna do, um, uh, you know, keep, but make note of these ones, then you can name, Linda's gonna, you will utilize that for her, her, her 10, her 10 beaver scenes that she's been doing while watching this right here. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. After, after, <laughs> So we want to do, oh, here, here. So Linda, what you're going to do is you're going to do this thing where um, you're going to have this environment and it's going to be this little trickle of a river or creek coming through. And then your next sequential piece is, you know, there's going to be this beaver and it's going to like chop down a couple trees. And then this will be like your final piece where it's like the ecosystem's been established and you put like 
little fish in here and, you know, a turtle and, you know, birds and everything like that. So it'll be like the, uh, the uh, you know, the sequence scene for um, that entire environment from, you know, Sans Beaver to, you know, uh, whatever, three years later or something like that, ten, ten years later. <laughs> Beaver, damn it. I signed my work, yes. Busy as a beaver. That's a good... See, all these are really good. I might put this up for auction. I might put that last one up for... I'll do the silent auction. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And then whoever wins it, you can change the name if you want to. Um, you can change it from that name that won out Benny the Beaver. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, the chocolate chip cookies went out. She can name it whatever she wants, huh? If you get one of those cookies. Huh. Well, I'm telling you, I, I'm... I, I haven't done too many of these larger pieces, but like I said, after that 11 by 17, this doesn't seem that big... By contra well, it's like half the size, right? But still, I don't know, like four little pieces that like that. I'll probably do, I might do, um, actually, I mean, there's something I want to do with those stencils after this. I want to do that stencil in a mirror kind of situation. I want to go chrome over chrome, and I want to put that half mirror like this. I mean, that half stencil up here. I want to do that round stencil. Okay, so imagine this is two pieces of that chromed, really silver mirror. I want to do that silver stencil right in the middle here like this. And then when you fold it over like that, this bottom part will look like it's going back in the distance that way. And this top portion will be reflected down here. So it's going to look like this circle is going like this way, coming out like this, right? And this other circle is going to be like that. And then you can place whatever you want in the center section that's going to be reflected down here. So... That's what I want to do with my next mirror card. So I think that'll be the next um, thing that I try out with that, um, with those stencils. But yeah, I need to get those stencil brushes, um, Linda. Yeah. Okay, so see, Linda, uh, if you're not on Facebook, uh, you're going to miss out on... Linda, you need to get a Flickr account or something like that so everyone that's not... You know, not everyone wants to do, like, social uh, media... But like that Flickr is like up public, you know, you need to post that um, that sequential um, fire piece. Well, any of your pieces, all your pieces, but that sequential um, fire and uh, kind of renewal piece of yours um, needs to be seen outside of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the framework of uh, Facebook, unless you already have it out there somewhere. But like all those pieces, but yeah, sequential, kind of those sequential pieces like that are really uh cool so yeah yeah so if you guys haven't done these things like these things like you know i was just kind of joking around with linda but i was thinking she'd probably do that but um you know the scenic stamping is perfect for i mean doing like individual scenes like this but if you can do a sequential piece that cre kind of creates a narrative or something like that one of the easiest things would be um like seasonal types of things where you can do kind of the same kind of um, format. I don't know if I would do it in eight and a half by 11, but it's a lot easier to do in cards, you know, quarter page cards or something like that, where you do the same um, general um, framework of your composition, you know, but then you do it in seasons. You can represent, you know, fall, spring, you know, summer and uh, winter, or you can do night and day types of things, or you can do it the course of a day. It could be a sunrise, noon, you know, sunset and midnight or something like that. But it's it's really fun doing those things and scenic stamping like that. Um, 
I don't know, uh, all kinds of things like that. So yeah, like a little creek or something like that down in this area. I'd probably put a little creek down in this area like that, and then you'd have it kind of filled up or something like that. You know, you maybe do a little bit of a half kind of a thing. You know, and maybe there would be grass up here, and then this little area is starting to fill up like that. Or I don't know. You know what I mean? This would be still like dirt down, or you'd have a little creek coming out from here still. You know what I mean? Where it's still flowing and it hasn't filled up in this area, or something like that can be done for like a beaver type of situation. That would be kind of interesting, I think. Or you can do felled trees, you know, like this and here, and then suddenly, you know, the beaver dam's kind of built up a little bit higher or something like that. Might be kind of interesting. Or uh, I don't know when the beaver, do they, the, the, I guess the dam would get built before the lodge, right? <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, that damn sweet damn. Uh, that's a that's a good one, PJB Stamper. I was telling, uh, we we need to make use of all these uh, names. These ones are really good names right here. All of them sounded, you know, really good. Okay, so Linda, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Linda, yeah, you got a Flickr account. Yeah, post those up there sometime. Um, you know, I mean, you have them already digitized. All you have to do is, you know, if you remember the uh, your password and everything like that, just click, you know. All you have to do is, you know, just click for, it's going to be easy for you. All you have to do is click upload and just, you know, just select all, you know what I mean? Even if you don't want to title everything like that and just press them up there just so people can see it outside of the, uh, like I said, like that closed environment like that, you know, um, no. And I don't know, unless you want to keep it, you know, private. Facebook's not private, but, you know, it's in the private group like that, you know, but, um, yeah. Yeah, K. Uh, Flickr's definitely a dead. Um, it's a dead site, you know, in terms of that. But it's still really convenient, though. You know, people can. You can pin from it. You can share to Facebook from it. Everything like that, you know. Because um, I, I just know, you know, I've. You know, there's a lot of people that just don't. Uh, do Facebook, you know, or, you know, those general types of, you know, Twitter and all that, you know, they don't, just didn't, they just kind of stay away from it. But um, as far as just a general kind of online gallery, you know, it really makes it easy for them to um, share their pieces and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, Froggy Fresh, just, you know, Froggy, Froggy Fresh, you, you just, you just started that uh, Flickr account, right? I don't, or unless you were already on there and just started, you know, posting more. Or the scene, you know, at least your pieces up there. But yeah, it's it's really cool to see it in there. And if you do that, if you guys want to, you know, you can join the group. I have a Stampscapes group where you can, people can just go in there, you know. But if you have it uh, up there, it'd be a good place to um, check out the... Uh, check out everyone's scenes and whatnot. You know, and it's just a matter of just clicking on an extra link or something like that when you're uploading your stuff to Facebook, so, um, yeah. Um, some of the people that are on, um, well, some people don't do any of it, so, so see, if sometimes people send me stuff in email form, and then if I'm sharing it, I'll do it, um, usually on the Flickr page, because more people can see it there, if I, you know, refer them over to that, but, um, and I'll usually share it to uh, Facebook too, but yeah. Yeah, I, you know what, I haven't posted directly onto Pinterest before, um, but I've always just pinned from those other sites like that. Okay, yeah, 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 see, see, Froggy Fresh is on there, so you gotta, you gotta check it out at uh, Adelita, though, you know, don't look, don't look for Froggy Fresh. Or can they look for it? It's not going to come up with that, right? You got to... She posted... It's under her name there. Oh, okay. So, Linda, you started a couple weeks. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Post that on there. Is it under your name, Linda? Or did I know that's that? I can't remember. I've been in a fog this past couple weeks. I've been working on those other things and uh, trying to get caught up and whatnot. So, I wasn't even on... Um, Facebook for like six days or something like that. I finally got on this afternoon and was like catching up with it, all this amazing stuff that got posted up there. And, uh, yeah. Post the name of the acrylic pens in the chat. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, Sue, 
Uh, looking for the funny name ones, but can't figure it. Yeah. Those ones are... Uh... Now, remember, um, Sue, uh, there's a link to them, too, from the YouTube channel. Like, in part one of this, there's links to all these pens in the description section of the, uh, the videos, too. So... There's a couple weird named ones. This one's the Emoki. But I think you're thinking of the, the Lan, Lan Ren Wang, or, you know what I mean? I don't know if I necessarily recommend that one because um, a lot of, now I like a lot of their um, um, metallics. The metallics are really cool, but um, this one has like a larger selection of the three millimeters, so Emu. Key millimeter. Okay, that one's that one. But again, yeah, it is miss. It's missing some pigment. Okay, let me see right here. Lan <laughs> Ren Wang. Uh, this one's like the. 0.7 millimeter uh, metallic pearl um, glitter and few three uh, three millimeter um, okay so this is what the, well this one looks right here but again see I want like a larger selection of these ones up here, especially kind of in those pastel tones. But I don't know. I mean, I did work for this instance. I use a lot of blues and then I use the white like that. So while these are out there and these have answered a lot of my, oh, I don't know, whatever kind of design considerations and stuff, Maybe the, unless, I don't know, unless there's some or other brands, I think there's that Posca one. And I think Crayola or something like that. I was kind of debating on whether or not to try some other ones. If certain pens like this come out, and they probably are out there in oil-based. These are water-based right here, acrylics. It could be possible that if there's an oil-based one out there, because I know that certain types of the, the extra fine um, 0.7 millimeter ones do come in oil-based media, like especially in the white. Okay, I think the white ones, because I used to use the Marvi white paint pen, and that was oil-based, and it was a lot more opaque, okay? Now, some of these ones like this, it, I like it because it incorporates in some of the colors that are underneath, but if I want that real stark white dot, then I th I'm speculating that the um, the white oil-based version of these pens might be better for that purpose. Um, but if they're in, if they do come in this um, big three millimeter kind of bullet tip one, it, they might be <laughs> the longevity of it might be you know much more short lived because I have a tendency of you know, to think that if you don't use them for a while, like with those types of pens, they might dry out on the tip where it's really hard to get it flowing again. Where I've found that these ones, like these water-based ones, um, and this is probably why they're a little bit more translucent. They're a little bit more watery. So it's the trade-off there. They make them a little bit more watery so that they don't clog on us. But on the other hand, with the more pigment ink, to binder, which is water ratio, if that was higher, maybe they would have a tendency of drying to where if you don't use them for a while, you know, maybe they would crust over. I don't know. I'm not really sure. You know, the other one, that Lan Ren Wang one, says that it's just more pigment ink, and those ones seem to have the same kind of uh, whatever consistency and flow as these ones do. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they're Maybe, I don't know, maybe they're higher quality or something like that. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Okay, so anyways, um, yeah. I will get this um, posted, and I'll do a much faster version of it. <laughs> yes.
been like hours of watching through this, you know, in the live stream. Of course, everyone always has the toggle switch. They can just go through to, you know, you know, I think most people kind of watch like the first minute or couple minutes of you know, this thing anyway and just like scroll through to like the final touches anyways, but I'll do a much faster version of this and whatnot. But yeah, uh, thanks for uh, bearing with me on this damn scene. <laughs> I look forward to seeing, uh, you know, if anyone else has some other kind of versions that they're going to be doing. I want to do some, you know, because these dam types of things like this, these water types of situations like this are really perfect for all kinds of really evocative types of uh, things because I like really bringing in, which I didn't really take advantage of here, but I love taking advantage of uh, things like where there's so much water in these areas like this to reflect you know, certain types of things that are going on in the sky. Can you imagine this in a, um, like a mirror card or something like that with a full moon rising above the, you know, thing where you can have that moon up here reflecting down in that, you know, or coming up like over the top of this moon and reflecting down here in like a mirror card situation. It doesn't have to be a mirror card, but if you had a moon up here, you can have it down here in the water, you know, which I think would be really dramatic. And then you can have like a beaver, you know, going across that moon kind of in the darkness or something like that. I think that would be super dramatic. It could even be the same composition right here. It'd be really fast to do too, because you can do these trees in black, you know, or something like this, and it would just be all blues in here. I haven't done that type of thing with, you know, such a large piece. I'm trying to think if I've really feel like doing that but it would go pretty fast you know if you're doing a nighttime seam of the same composition because you you know you're not doing all these little detail works in here with like shimmering color or something you could put some blues in there or something like that but um i don't know yeah cecile gaspar you don't the, the, these you know longer versions don't put you to sleep there I, i'm talking about in the replay <laughs> Glad you didn't, uh, glad, well, if, if, if it meant you were having fun, Jeannie, good thing. Hope you get back to stamping if you, you know, cool down in there. Put a cold, you know, put a wet um, towel around your neck and put a fan on you, you know, and that, whatever, that 90 degree days you're having up there in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Thanks for joining in in this damn video, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost, uh, almost, uh, almost uh, three decades old there, Kay. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Cecile. Thanks for joining in on the live. Anyone else on uh, that's that's watched this that's still on? Thanks so much for joining in. I really had a great time with this piece right here. I would say that it largely, you know, came out. Uh, you know, I didn't have the composition in mind or something like that, but just in terms of the spirit of it, I wanted to see that dam with, you know, a lot of these kind of deciduous trees around it and whatnot. I still need to, I, I should put a couple of these leaves down here in the water too still. I don't know, maybe I'll decide to do that. I'll give it a, I'll, I'll sleep on it, but I might put a couple of these like leaves, like yellow leaves in the water, um, kind of floating around like that. I think that maybe needs to be done. So, yeah. Thanks so much, PJB. It is, yes, it is the uh, the birthday tomorrow. Um, let's see. I guess that's coming up in a few hours, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's 97. Wow. Well, I hope it's a really, I hope that 97 is a very pleasant and comfortable 97. <laughs> Thanks, CM Hawkins. Thanks, Eve. Thanks, Froggy Fresh. Looking forward to seeing uh, more of your pieces. You can put that uh, sinking uh, ship in here, you know, in a beaver dam type of situation there. Your galleon in there. <laughs> yeah. Good night, Crystal Fire. Vanessa, Candy, Jen. Thanks so much. Have a great night, everyone. Oh, PJB's 
cousin's uh, birthday is tomorrow too. So uh, someone's dad was uh, you know in there too. Well, a couple dads' um, uh, birthdays year it used to be thirty first or still are. So happy birthday to the cousin there, PJB. They must be um, very exceptional people, uh, person, I would guess, then. <laughs> I'm joking, folks. I was like, hey, Kevin said this on, uh, you know, uh, on his live stream. Conceded to the max. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm surprised how hot it is in some areas in relation to damn there. So put a train running or the beaver. <laughs> You should have your train running right in here. Oh, I think our hot days are coming up next month um, down here in Southern California. It hasn't been too bad so far this summer, but, um, and it's been really, uh, you know, really comfortable at nights though. So it, we haven't really had to use our AC, but anyway. So, you know, if you do get hot or uncomfortable, stamp out a, stamp out the coldest scenes you can. You know, depending on how the level of discomfort you're featuring, you know, or you can do like little windy things, you know, I don't know. Jeannie always did do these pieces like a, like winter and they're like, they're like blustery as well. So they get the wind chill factor in some of her scenes. So, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Jeannie, I don't know why you're not uh, stamping out those really cool, you know, types of things. Unless you're inspired by the cool, actual cool temperatures where you want to stamp out those colder temps like that you know, during the winter time, but you can escape into one kind of a psychological, um, standpoint, uh, by stamping it, um, uh, during the hotter times. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks so much. We'll see you on the next, uh, live stream sometime. Thanks for joining in.